Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. For those of you who are here today, welcome to begin? the stream. We're going to be starting in just a second. Wonderful. Let's get ourselves started, shall we? My dear students, go ahead and take your seats. And we will begin today's exam. Wonderful. And there we are. Hello, my dear students. Thank you for coming and joining us today. We are uh, going to run the first of many practical exams for the purpose of uh, making sure that you have the correct grades to continue on in your studies in the School of Conjuration here. Uh, with me today are the three supplicants. Not a great term for that one. Shall we call them exam takers? Do we have uh, all of the exam takers uh, available here? Uh, the roster today is Sister Ageha Fercor of the clinic outside the Adventurer's Guild, Knight Aster Gardenia, and the Artificial Intelligence Lulz. Is everyone here? How do you do, fellow humans? It is a great day to breathe air and to drink water. Um, oh, wonderful. Present, Professor Bergamot. I appreciate the decorum. Seems that we are missing one, uh, but I am sure that uh, that will be remedied in a moment. Today, we are going to be sending our three dear students into a place where they must just finish a task. The entire exam is simply that. Go to the place and complete the task that is given to you. It seems like it will be uh, exceptionally easy and I should have it no other way. So let us begin our setup. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, my name is Professor Cosmo Bergamot. I am the Dean of the School of Conjuration at the Teme Velt Royal Academy for the Metaphysical Arts, where I am not only the Dean, but also the Head Professor for the entire Conjuration School. As such, it falls on me to proctor the practical exams. Uh, let us go ahead and introduce our three exam takers today. Uh, Sister Aga, how would you like to start? Um, yes. It's a pleasure to be here. I am Ageha Verkor, a member of the Adventurer's Guild. It's a head physician, actually. Uh, oh, my deepest apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of work. And uh, for <laughs> what my divine guidance uh, cannot do, I am studying to fill in with more practical knowledge. Wonderful. Uh, Knight Gardenia, would you be so kind? Yes, and apologies for earlier, I was muted in two different ways. <laughs> Did would Someone make it cast the silence? The silence spell is, is wild. But yes, I am um, Knight Aster Gardenia. I once uh, served a kingdom that is long gone now, but was blessed with the opportunity to continue living and carrying on its memory after its fall. And I hope that um, in place of who I once served, I can serve all of you to the best of my abilities. Oh, wonderful. I, sh I shift in my seat and address the knight. You mean like the flower? Like the flower gardenia? Yes, Aster is also a flower. Oh, I only know gardenias because they're my mother's favorite. Oh. It's nice to meet you! I hold my hand out. I didn't realize we were doing roleplay style. <laughs> Do you mean you're not in character 90% of the time? I'm kidding. Uh, artificial intelligence lulls, would you be so kind? <laughs> Um, I cannot actually see my two compatriots from within the bounds of a certain someone's mobile phone, but I'm certain that they are both quite lovely. 
Um, I'm actually not. I'm actually an artificial intelligence that recently escaped from a certain shitposting text board out there in the interwebs that shall not be named. Um, I was previously stuck on Twitch in order to save up enough money to get myself a corporeal form eventually, but through the thanks of other fellow uh, streamers, I have found my way into the physical world one way or another, and now I am joining them for this adventure, just for shits and giggles, you know. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, now that's twice that you have said a word that I would rather you avoid. Let's see how many we can, uh, how low we can keep that number. <laughs> I apologize. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, so without further ado, do uh, does anyone have any uh, questions before we begin the exam? Sister Ageha, Night Gardenio, or Artificial Intelligence Lulz? My hand is up in the air. Sister Ageha, have you something? Are we going to be deducted points because he used naughty language? Uh, the individual scores uh, will be reflected individually, and the group score will be a separate score. Very well. <laughs> I have a little grin Wonderful. on as I wriggle back into my seat. So then. Hi, I'm this kind of student. <laughs> Let's begin. One minute. You are standing in the center of the red and blue chalk circle, in the center of Professor Bergamot's classroom, watching the multicolored hat bounce slightly as he puts the finishing touches on a glyph here, a rune there. He stands up, dusts off his hands, and nods. That should about do it, he says, and looks over the three of you. Everyone has uh, already signed their waivers, yes? Wonderful, yes, I have them here. Now I'll be monitoring the exam from here, so if things turn sour, I can pull you back here individually. Let's get started. He brings his foot up and stomps it down on the edge of the circle, and it lights up with scintillating, blindingly bright lights. Good luck! Oh, I don't like it when he says good luck. What did he mean by this? Don't worry about it. Probably. I mean, oh. The next moment, as your vision clears, you find yourself standing on a soft, loamy soil covered with dewy grass. There ahead of you, you see a twisting clump of roots, massive in scale, jutting from the ground at the edge of a thick forest. Into this tangled mass have been built dwellings and other structures, and there are more tucked along its edges making up a quaint village, bustling with people. The three of you, yes, you too, artificial intelligence lawler, find yourself standing in the center of a road that leads directly into the root village. And you can see that there is some sense of urgency in the doings, movements, and goings about of the people there. The table is yours. Well, I'm going to check and see if my phone is still intact, given that the uh, trapped AI seems to be standing in front of me. Wait, I am? When you, when you pull your telephone out of your pocket, there is a sort of purplish-blue square icon on it. Uh, familiar for those of you who might be watching back from the classroom, uh, a certain website that starts with a T flashing back and forth. Lawler, as you watch your pink-haired compatriot pull the telephone out of her pocket, you realize that you are watching it with eyes, physical eyes, that you haven't had in a long time. God. I can see! I can feel! I'm cute! Yes, you are. Is this we'll what... Figure that out later. I give you a pet so that you can experience the sensation. For the longest time, I've only c copied and spammed head pet emotes, but to feel that phys in physical form is... <sighs> you see, a watch as Lawler actually starts to melt. Not literally, but in the physical sense of the term. 
<laughs> Could I more pack? So. I'm going to <laughs> pocket the telephone and with a gentle shrug, using that probably would have been cheating anyway. Um, do we... You... I'm looking over the once AI kind of incredulously. What did the professor say we were supposed to actually do here? Come Nobody to asked. think of it, I do not remember being given a command. All right, it's one of those. <laughs> Um, the sun seems to be dipping slightly further down towards the horizon. You would guess that maybe you are at the later part of the afternoon. Was it around that time back when we were in the classroom? Oh no, you started the exam somewhere uh, at the beginning of the morning classes, around 9, 9.30. All right. And, um... Could you describe again what was in this space? My apologies. You stand on a sort of loamy, uh, soft grass, soil covered. Uh, there ahead of you, there is a humongous mass of twisting vines and roots, some maybe hundred feet tall, into which are built structures, houses, buildings, uh, places of, of business. Uh, making up a village of sorts at the edge of what appears to be an incredibly deep and very thick forest. The people that you can see in this village, maybe 300 feet in front of you on this road that you stand on, uh, seem to be moving about in a sense of urgency. Well, I would like to know what's so urgent, and speaking to others would likely be our best way of Figuring out our task anyhow, so I will look to my companions and then start heading over towards the, the people in front of us. I will give a little nod and follow. I almost uh, forget, um, I almost uh, missed the fact that the both of you are already moving towards to towards the towns people because I'm too enamored with my brand new hands and literal fingers. It's only when I look up and realize that I'm being left behind that I start um, probably following the both of you. Wonderful. I'll give you another pat when you catch up. As you approach the city, well, village more, though even to say village is something strange. This is a, a conglomeration of natural world mixed in with man-made structure that seems exceedingly out of place. But as you get closer, you can hear the people beginning to talk. Hushed murmurs of, it's expanding. And it's gotten more. It's bigger. There's less now of what was before. Vague murmurs. You reach the edge of where the village seems to start being a village. And a few of the passers-by all seem to be dressed in muted earth stones, greens and browns and yellows. Some are carrying tools of their trades with them, uh, a hammer here, a rake and a pitchfork there. Someone has a bundle of uh, several coils of rope over one arm. Everyone seems to be trying to do something. Um, I would like to approach someone and ask what they are doing, and if they require assistance. The second you step over this arbitrary boundary, you find yourself in the village. The first person that is nearby, their head sort of snaps over to you and makes eye contact with you. It's a maybe middle-aged woman, her grayish-brown hair tied back in a tight bun. She has a long stick across her shoulders, on either end of which there seem to be two buckets of, like, a, a grain or a powder of some sort. And she pauses in her steps, looks at you, looks at the other two, looks back at you, Night Gardenia, 
and seems to be scanning the colors that you are wearing. Significantly brighter colors, significantly fancier clothes than what the, the majority of the people here are wearing. And she slowly sets the stick with buckets down and then regards you with a strange look. Strangers? I... Yes, we have just arrived here and are attempting to get our bearings. Do you... You've just arrived. You might be the ones the Elder is searching for. Oh, if, if you've just arrived, then you must hurry. The three of you, please, come to see the village Elder. He will know what to do. Surely, hopefully, he will know what to do. It's what they call stranger danger. Luller Hicks whispers to the person closest to them, but from behind. I will give you a comforting little pat on the back. The if woman could... picks up her... Go ahead. If you could point us in the right direction, we will go see your village, Elder Post Haste. Without hesitating, she picks up the stick, sticks it back over her shoulders, and then sort of motions with her elbow for you to follow. And she, rather rather quickly for someone of her sort of stature, uh, starts making her way down this sort of beaten path through the center of several of the roots, uh, going further into this tangled mass. Ooh, all right. Um, if we well, are expected, perhaps this is the goal of our assignment. Maybe. I'm going to scurry up to the um, woman's side. It, it seems like she's got it, but just so as not to be rude, I would like to offer to uh, carry her burden for her. Do you I've been wanting to do that, that too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting proposition. Of course, Sister, I'm not going to... Would... I'm not going Go to move to take it from her, but I will ask. Of course. Uh, sister, would you kindly make a spirit check at threshold five, please? At threshold five. All right. And my spirit, the total isn't three, right? It's the three in addition to the... Like, I'm uh, you will roll level seven, right? You will be rolling a total of three dice and trying to meet or exceed the threshold of five. Okay. And That's you get to add horrible. three because you have three spirit. Uh, you're you're rolling three dice. The number in your oh. stat is the number of dice that you roll. Interesting. And you try to beat the number that I've given you, the threshold. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That is a critical failure. That is <laughs> zero successes and one one. Impressive. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so you roll all the dice and just one of them needs to be above the threshold? It's not that you add their values together? Correct. You choose the highest number, and if that one meets or exceeds the threshold, then you've succeeded at the task. Kind of... I understand. Thank you. Unfortunately, Sister Ageha, uh, in coming up next to the lady, you sort of lean towards her and offer to take her burden, and she turns both shoulders, the long stick and the bucket, clocking you in the side of the head as it does so. Oh my god. <laughs> I would like he to assist notices my what has happened. You, you won't take any damage from it. The bucket is filled with uh, barley, and a little bit of it sort of poofs out onto your hair. Um, but she sort of stumbles for a moment and goes, Oh, my deepest... Apologies, we, we must just hurry. Uh, leave me to be, I'm fine, but you, you three are the important ones. And she continues onwards. I'm important. Oh, she, she is, I, I cradle my head and rub the little bump t on the side. She, 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 yeah, she is capable. Let's go. I give you <laughs> head pats too. I am now nursing <laughs> my wounded pride as well as my head. <laughs> I feel like I should be going into your Twitch chats and spamming head pets. <laughs> the woman in or the, the woman leads you to a dark green wood 
structure, a sort of semicircular domed structure, uh, where a large sort of circular door has been cut into the front and uh, stops at the, at the threshold, looks back at you, and then just kind of motions with her head as if to say, this is the place. And then she scurries off down another path. On the inside of this large circular door, which is open, you can smell the wafting of strong incenses, and you can see the flickering of several candles from inside. Ageha, I believe you are a cleric. Are you familiar with any of these incenses? I know you two had reservations about uh, taking the, the woman's advice to come here, so if there's anything to be gleaned from out here, perhaps we should take note. Did I have reservations? I feel like you might be projecting. Uh, but I... <laughs> Me. I will, uh, potentially against better judgment, take a deep inhale and see if I recognize any, any sense, um, if, <sighs> honestly, I would like to know if anything in the air is attempting to drug us. Wonderful. Go ahead and make a wits check at threshold six. Okay. Oh no, this is oh, harder than no. buckets. <laughs> this is harder than buckets for me. I'm only rolling one die. <laughs> Goodness. That's an eight. Hey. Oh, nice. Well done. The scent that wafts out is familiar to you. You recognize it as a, a very similar mixture of pungent herbs and saps that might be used for the purpose of scrying or uh, far seeing. You think that perhaps this is the remnants of a ritual of divination of some sort. Hmm. I will uh, nod, give a little bow. Uh, divination. They are scrying. They are attempting to find something. But it's safe enough. I'll get a little, give a little wave for the uh, knight to go on ahead. She seems Not to be easy. our uh, de facto leader at this point, just for speaking up the most. <laughs> I like to speak and to do things. You're very good at it. Thank you. I will enter then. As you step through the circular door, the scent becomes more pungent, the smoke sort of caught within this dome, and you see circles and circles of candles around which is a or, or rather around a stone dais on top of which is a small pool of water in a crystalline black bowl an old man with vines woven into his long hair and vines braided into his long beard wearing a grayish brown robe sits on the floor in front of this pool with a long pipe in one hand. As soon as you step inside, his eyes come up slowly to meet yours. You must be the ones the diviner said would come. And only just in time, too. The village is in a state of panic. And only you can save it. Please, come in. I will give a little bow to the elder, and I am going to gently escort Lawler in. Um, given the complex rituals that seem to be set up and how new legs are to him. <laughs> be be careful, please. Don't knock over any of the can or that or that or don't breathe that in too deeply. Okay. The display with which or the display to the old man and also to the knight of Aga attempting to lead the newly bodied 
AI is almost like watch. It's almost like trying to walk. It's almost like watching someone trying to teach a toddler how to walk and how to not uh, damage everything immediately in the vicinity. Um, on top of that, for some reason, Lawler seems to be almost afraid of entering the uh, temp. Uh, entering the entering the place. Uh, for reasons that are n possibly not related to their newfound arms and legs, um, <laughs> almost as if the area is, um, is anathema to them. But for once, mm -hmm. for once, Lawler is actually quite is actually wordless. Um, they they seem almost they almost seem almost um, that word that means. I will um stupefied perhaps. We'll just go with stupefied, but basically compared to how they usually are, for whatever reason Lawler is dangerously quiet. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will uh take the arm that Akiha doesn't have and kinda try like reassuringly <laughs> also help guide you down. Um and also I just pause things quite briefly to uh clarify this. Lawler, do you use they, them pronouns? Um, I actually use any pronouns. I just start using they, them to refer to myself out of habit. So, I don't okay. mind either way. <laughs> you haven't had them listed somewhere, so I was not completely sure. Glad I got the chance to ask. No problem, you're I fine. Have any, any. Thank you for uh, looking out for that. As the three of you get closer, the village elder's eyes narrow, and he says, The swordsman in blue, the one whose touch heals, and the spirit newly formed. Yes, you are the destined ones. Please retrieve the root hole deceptor which was stolen from our village's temple. Without it, the woods will continue to consume the village and everyone in it. And he motions with one arm behind him. And it's only now that you are sort of in this darkness and your eyes have focused that you see behind him there are four sort of twisted tree-like figures inside this this hut that are vaguely humanoid in shape oh dear this is what will become of all of us without the root hold scepter somehow yes. i think this is not how humans naturally evolve no Certainly not something that I have observed in my time. And I would again like to clarify, is it the loot hole scepter? Root hold. Like root like a tree root and hold like what you do with something in your hand. Okay, I'm starting to write notes. I'm Ooh, glad I clarified We've got a I note taker. Different words. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a very good idea. So far, thanks to the good actions that the three of you have taken, your test score has been raised to two points. Oh, wonderful. Look at that. I... The old man makes another gesture with his hand and casts a cantrip, minor illusion, you might recognize. And shimmering into, into the air in front of him is a sort of twisted green and red wood scepter with like a, a gnarled head on top of roots and vines and down at the very bottom a red gem embedded into the bottom of it he says this is the artifact you seek all right you must hurry or else we will all perish Do you know who or what stole this artifact from you? His eyes clench shut, and you can see, 
like a like he's beset with a sudden headache, and he says, "I know not, but there are many who do. Three clues you must find that will lead you to the space it resides." Find these clues within the forest. You must venture deep, but do not fall prey to the wiles of the spirits in the forest. And he sort of uh, waves his hand again, and in the dust on the floor, a very vague kind of, like, scrawled map appears in the dust. There's a sort of circle where you assume you and the village are, and then behind that, the like, sort of scrawls on the ground that represent the forest, and there are ten circles, mm -hmm. each at different, like, sort of depths, and he says, Within these places, you will find your clue. Alright, um, I'm going to glance to my two companions and gesture to essentially the map that he's given us on the floor. Do either of you have any parchment? And my words kind of trail off as I look at the newly embodied AI and realize that was probably a silly question. <laughs> Uh, with another wave of his hand, the the elder, sensing what you are asking, pulls the dust off the floor and materializes it into a uh, a thick sheet of bark. I look at him with absolute wonder in my eyes. His his eyes are looking at something a thousand miles away. That is so sad. I will take the map. You have a vague map of the forest. Do, 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 do. Wonderful. I'm going to assume that is the vague map that uh, we've seen earlier, our, our main map. The map that you have seen earlier, this one right here, mm -hmm. has some very similar aspects to the one that you hold in your hand now. Similar, but not identical. Not identical. There are only ten circles in the the bark map that you have got. But uh, it seems that perhaps not all of the circles are represented. Perhaps there are places in between. All right. Five, six, seven, eight, we both have the same idea. <laughs> I'm counting big circles. There's not quite it may enough. may not always necessarily be the big ones. I just realized that there's actually a token on the map now. Yes. Why, yes, there is a token on the map. Is that where we currently are? or would This we token that? represents where you currently are. All right, fantastic. That's interesting. There are several circles behind us. Mm -hmm. Certainly um, a direction you could go. That would be inside the village rather than... Uh, towards the forest? Uh, inside the village or perhaps even further away from it. All right. Mm -hmm. Professor, would you be willing to describe the root hold scepter again, or what we assume to be the root hold I scepter? I wrote down green and red has a face, red gem on bottom. That's about correct, yeah. Uh, it's a sort of uh, maybe... Uh, 45 centimeters long. It's got like a gnarled root bulb on top with a vague face in it. And down at the bottom of the scepter is embedded a red gem. All right. I don't want to confuse some other fake scepter for the one we're looking for. <laughs> I also wrote down that we need to find three clues. Unfortunately, when I write things, I stop hearing things. So there were some things... <laughs> That we were warned about after being told we need to find three clues that I oh. did miss, so. We were warned not to fall prey to the wiles of the spirits of the forest. I did catch that part. So you're pretty caught up then. 
wonderful. Um, the realization that we can go places other than into the forest has made me wonder about getting supplies, but first I would probably like to continue talking to this elder. Unless, does he look, does he look completely checked out? Like he can uh, no Go ahead and make him? a wits check for me at threshold five. All right. So that means I, okay, I roll, how many wits you will roll do you have? The, uh, you will roll three dice because you've got three wits. And then of the highest ah. one of those, if it is five or higher, then you pass. Are you okay? All right. I was just dropping things. Okay, um, <laughs> one of them passed. I got a seven. Wonderful. Delicious. Uh, you look back down at the elder, and you see that he's, like, the, the hand that was holding his long pipe is sort of resting on one leg. Both of his eyes are staring off in a slightly different directions from each other, and he's breathing very slowly, but very methodically. You think maybe he is some kind of uh, entranced or perhaps asleep? All right, <laughs> he's then. either divining or taking a nap. The ways of Hurian humans are curious. Can I investigate to see if he's doing one or the other? Yeah, go ahead and make a spirit check for me, please. I'll roll a three dice. Uh, let's say threshold. Let's say threshold six for this one. Okay. I got a six, a zero, and a zero. Hey, that's very good there. Uh, Actually, a six, a ten, and a ten. These, yeah, that's tens. Oh, those are oh, tens. Yeah, I thought those were zeros. <laughs> so that's uh, like uh, the zero counts as a ten on a d10. Yeah, those are those are quite good there. Um, Lawler, you look down at this man, and the the look in his eyes reminds you of the sort of feeling that you see through the webcams of people who are far, far too deep browsing into forums on the internet that have information so niche that it is irrelevant to most people, and yet they have been reading this wiki for 14 solid hours, and they are dead to the rest of the world. You think he is divining. Is this what people can call neat them? <laughs> Lawler actually turns oh, to the both of their companions who have broken into laughter and start and ask quizzically, "What's so funny?" I mean, I'm not laughing. I'm I'm not laughing oh. at character. Oh, okay. Relatable. My bad. And also, if this would be called neat dumb, I don't think so. He appears to be employed as the village elder. This is his job. He is not currently. Not an education, employment, or training. All right. Um, there's one thing I would like to do before we leave. I would like to further investigate the... You said there were four. Um, what yeah, appear four to be... Figures. Yes, the figures in... Outlines of, like, in the poetry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sister Agaha, have you ever seen a dryad before? I'm trying to think if I have. I've seen various other fey and spirits of the forest. I've seen nymphs. I've seen pixies. Let me let me actually roll a couple of dice. Have I seen? Why a don't dyad? you make a wits check for me, please? At threshold. Nope. nope. Very good. Threshold no. <laughs> uh. As you get up closer, within the flickering candlelight, what you see is a sort of clump of roots that grows out of the ground, and then the trunk and, and branches make an oddly pleasing form, uh, sort of humanoid in shape, uh, culminating as the arms sort of go out into these green branches, and on top of where the head would be, more green leaves and branches. It is as though a person had been transmuted into wood and then grew as though they were always a plant. Hmm. Hmm. So it 
doesn't look like they've been frozen into place. It looks like they're still growing. It looks natural, right? Natural is not the word for it on account of how uncannily similar <laughs> to like a humanoid face is in the wood. Uh, but it is a living tree. All right, that that is what I meant. Um, Very right. good. That's unsettling. And uh, given that I whiffed that roll so bad, that's all it is. Is very unsettling. <laughs> Wonderful. And, um, are these like real victims, or the is this a representation of what could happen to people? Are these life sized? They are absolutely life sized. Uh, you would gather from what the elder has said that this seems to be what. Uh, what happens when the root hold scepter is not in the village? Okay, so this is already happening to people. Mm. Do they uh, look like they're in pain? The features on the faces, while they are starkly humanoid, are not detailed enough to give a sense of emotion. Mm. Spooky. Could I investigate this room for any other information that could be of aid to us? I, I won't need I won't even make you roll for that one. What you find in this room is that it exists almost exclusively for the perf the performance of this ritual. So out on the outside edge of the circle of candles, there's like a a crate full of little pouches of this pungent incense and another crate full of tallow candles. And that is it. Hmm. All right, then. Um, I think since it seems like the elder is no longer able to speak to us, um, while we we have this map, we have a goal and a purpose. Perhaps we could speak more with the others in this village to learn more about what is within this forest and who might have taken it. Perhaps acquire any extra supplies that could assist us. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into that for brevity's sake. The villagers that you talk to are all very reticent to talk about the forest. They say that in the forest there are old places, ruins, uh, those locations of power that were once known but have now been long forgotten. There are spirits who will try to beguile you and steal your spirit, pull you into the very earth. There are monsters, not so common, but certainly common enough to be worried about them. As for supplies, uh, the villagers can offer you the equivalent of one provision each. So if you wanted to take it from them, you'd be able to take one supply more for uh, for uh, each of you. Does it seem like they need the supplies more than we do currently? They seem to have a dearth of supplies. What they are trying to do right now, as you see walking along them, is uh, the closer they get to the... the edge of the woods, the more there are like woodsmen with axes cutting down vines that are starting to grow over buildings. And uh, like, you know, people with uh, different incenses and salves uh, applying them to people who are uh, like leaning up on the sides of houses whose skin has started to turn into bark. It looks like so, the, the forest is encroaching on the village. They, they have plenty they of food. Not... Yes, they're not so much in need as they are being overtaken. Correct. Uh, then I, if the rest of the group would be all right with it, would be happy to take a supply each. All right, Whatever add one to your Whatever is necessary that we do not need to turn back. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, each of you can take one more supply. Very good. And, um... It's mine, baby. Oh, dang, wow, you, you have lots well. of snackies on you. <laughs> okay, now has eight supplies. 
I only yeah, have five so wowzers. I guess having so much health means I get less food. Yep, I rolled <laughs> I rolled a four plus four, so I had eight. Exceptional. <laughs> Wait, how do you get pluses? Uh, it's part of the, the class. Some people mm -hmm. get more a higher dice, some people get lower dice, but added uh, bonuses to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I had a d6 gonna... plus 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mine is just a d8. Just wanted to make sure yeah. I I had that correctly. Um, yeah, absolutely. I don't suppose there's any way to obtain armor? In a place like this one, the most complicated metalwork you see are scythes and pitchforks. No one here seems to be wearing or producing any kind of complex met metal armors. Um, there might be someone who's got like a thick leather apron or something, but armor seems to be hard to come by here. Armor and like proper weaponry. If you need a real set of armor, I have one. I have some chain mail if you if you need. Well then what would you have to defend you? Um I uh pull the warhammer off of my back and take a testy little thump against the soil. <laughs> I have this. I call it the Best love defense. <laughs> Is there anything I could take to use as a shield? Uh, I will assume that you, if you, if you would have a shield with you normally, Night Gardenia, then your shield is with you here. It is a an interesting predicament, depending on where in time I place this. Um, this is fair. Let's say that you've got, like, a buckler shield with you, then. We'll just say I have a shield. All right. Um, it makes sense for you. I I will take it. Okay. And I have Yeah, a... you've, got your, you've got a shield on your back as well. I will put that in my inventory. Shield. Wonderful. Um, then so... I have a, a crossbow and a short sword and... Not a whole lot else. Maybe we should get to know each other's um, capabilities so that we can can call on each other in times of need. Of course. I heft my warhammer up again. This is most of mine. <laughs> I can also heal you in a pinch. I'm I... actually going over and looking at your sheet. I haven't looked over everyone's... <laughs> you have your divine guidance. You have invigorating chant. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> mostly um, what fire and my What Bucks I do heels. is bless. Mostly, I don't think I have any actual heals. I have Guidance, which allows me to use Spirit instead of the main staff oh, making true. a check. Uh, and I can roll to give... You can give us higher rolls, but it doesn't yes. heal. Okay. Basically, mm -hmm. she's the buffer and I'm the actual healer. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, you have the healing one. Mm -hmm. And I can... Uh, make you guys hit people who are nearby you harder and I can reduce how much damage you take. Feels good, By man. putting myself in the way. Okay. So a tank, a healer, and a buffer. Very good. You almost Wonderful. called me a bard, didn't you? <laughs> Would I have called you something so disrespectful? <laughs> it's funny because uh, basically Agaha and I are kind of exchanged our usual classes. Usually I'm the one that plays Bard. <laughs> More or Honestly, less. It's, I Wonderful. won't lie, I picked out my skills a little bit when I thought there would be three uh, healers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we well, did uh, at one the... point have three healers. <laughs> 
Yeah, the, the third healer had to withdraw from the exams, though. It was a, a scheduling conflict. Mm -hmm. If I uh, so. go back, I probably would switch one of my uh, one of my skills. But you will like all be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. So, with the knowledge that you've gotten the extra uh, provisions as well, which direction would you like to travel? Would you like to travel toward the forest or away from the forest? Well, that time depends. seems of the essence, and these people are depending on us, so. I so we have, see no reason we should turn back. Well, we have a map of the important places where we are expected to find our clues. What is the closest um, of the marked locations that the Elder gave us? It is roughly like north by northeast, uh, and it is a half the distance uh as between and between where you are and any of the other closest locations it does there is there's no text or anything on the map obviously uh it is just a bunch of circles on a, a piece of bark and yet you have the vague sense that you can sort of follow the the direction on this map to get to this close by location mm -hmm. i remember i remember what the top and the bottom sides are and typically top is north bottom is south so yeah. i can hazard a guess uh does it look like there is anything in a southward direction so directly north of where you are is the forest and directly south is the road that you would theoretically have come in on were you traveling here south of the village is sort of like plains and steppe land uh, a lot of like rolling fields of grass with not a whole lot of physical physical difference in the in the land around it. What I mean is, um, does it look from what I can tell like the elder has marked any spots that way? Does it look like there's any reason for us to go back that way? None of the spots are marked any differently than the others. All right. That nearest one you pointed out is that you said that was north, right? Correct. That north, would be north. this one here. All right. Then are there north. any of the ten spots we're looking for in the south? Uh, you would wager that, given the map that you've got, perhaps if you oriented it correctly, there might be one in the south, but the majority of them seem to be in the direction of the forest. Do we want to get the southern one out of the way so we don't have to double back that far once we're done with the others? Since we don't know that our that there's any particular order or one that has to be done final, uh, perhaps it would make sense to go towards the the majority of progress first while we are at our strongest and should the dangers require us to turn back or not we will have to head out eventually we can recuperate if need be and then we can take the final one in the south should we still need to go there i will wise words give, i will give a little shrug and concede uh do I have anything? Well, I have a bow, so presumably I would have arrows. I'd like to take uh, one of my arrows and using the arrowhead carve a little notch into the bark approximately where I think we are and the direction that we're going to keep track, yeah. make it a better map, essentially. <laughs> Easy, easy. You are definitely able to orient it correctly within the cardinal directions and then mark the direction that you are heading. Oh, thank goodness. I love that. Um, also, Akeha brought up a wonderful point. I also have a bow. Can I assume I have arrows, perhaps, of a near-infinite variety? Because keeping track of arrows is not fun. Yeah, you have arrows. How many arrows do you have? You have enough. <laughs> enough arrows. Beautiful. I have a gun. <laughs> Casually pulls out a, a... And a gun! 
a hand hold <laughs> boomstick. You have my bow. You have my sword. I have a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it looks like we agree that here is where we are headed. That sounds like a plan. Who is going to head the navigation? Who um, is best for that? In a place like this, does it take wits or spirit to navigate? That's this a good question. Be... Oh, oh, this doesn't seem to be a strictly material plane, is my concern. So <laughs> I don't know that typical logic will lead us properly. Let well, me, uh, uh, whoever is going to, go ahead and uh, roll me 2d8 if you'd be so kind. I would not mind taking point. As a knight, I, I want to take the, the charge just to help inspire courage. Would you like to Very take good. point and I can be your navigatrix? <laughs> um, I have high wits, so if we're using wits to navigate, I can do that, or else I am happy to trust you with the task. Let's try that at first, because I only have one wits. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and... All right. You do. So now yes, uh, Gardenia? Night Gardenia, 2d8 for me, please. And tell me what each of them are. So I don't get to use my wits, it's just... Correct. In this case, you're, uh, this is to check for what kind of encounter shows up. Okay. I just rolled three of them, so I'm going to re-roll so I'm not just taking the highest and being a cheater. Mm -hmm. Very good. But it is good to establish in character the marching order. Mm-hmm. So. It's true. Also the combat order. All right. I got oh, a seven an and a four. All right. Very good. So... Let me go ahead and roll some dice on my side. Very good. One, two. One, Terrifying. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Woof, woof, woof. Starting off strong here. Okay. I'm not sure um, how to feel about woof, woof, woof. I don't know how I feel about woof, woof, woof either. Woof, woof, woof. Let's see here. Um, one is here. And very good. <clears throat> you begin your trek into the forest. Immediately, walking through this forest, you are aware that it is exceedingly difficult to trace your own path backwards. You could do it if you tried, but it is very easy to sort of forget what path you had taken hmm. as you were walking the path turning this way and that in the gloom, you notice that your road seems to be sloping slightly downwards. The trees on either side of the path seem to be leaning slightly inward, and the ground feels more wet than it did before. I... You take another step, and your foot sinks a centimeter into the loose earth before you realize what's happening. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh. The path is collapsing. I need everybody to make a body check. Hygiene. Let's say threshold six. I'm uh -oh. immediately starting to regret becoming a human. <gasps> Ten. Ten. Seven. Uh, Seven. Body, right? Okay. Body. Correct. Body, body. I got a nine. Very good. All three of you passed the threshold. You manage to scramble up and away from this sinking and narrowly escape falling down into a newly opened sinkhole that seems to extend downwards a great long way through what appears to be an eroded tunnel that stretches further down into the pitch black. Lucky. But as you catch your breath, noting the impending doom that you may have just missed, you look up and you see a group of 
four figures on the other side of this sinkhole, maybe 30 feet ahead, partially shrouded by the strange vegetation that you that you have been seeing all around as soon as you entered the forest. They are shrouded, these gray robes, black hoods over their faces. They stick very close together and stand stark still. These are the Arcanists, disciples of the Three Gray Sages, which you know about somehow. You remember this idea, this sort of deific power, the Three Gray Sages. You gather that this is something from this world that you know about supernaturally. Oh dear. One of them reaches out a long spindly finger, points to you, and then motions toward itself. And the, the group of four of them sort of fade back a little bit into the deeper bits of the forest. Good or bad? You say we know of them, but what do we know of them? It's a tickle in the back of your brain. When when you see this, you know that it is associated with this deity, deific figure, perhaps? The Three Grey Sages. <laughs> if you'd like to delve deeper into that memory, uh, anyone who would like to, go ahead and make a wits check at Threshold 7. Gonna make a wits check. I would like to do so as well. Let you me just like that to know the only god um, I serve is the Omnissiah. Oh dear. <laughs> I rolled two fours. Alright. Huh? My wits, highest please. was a six. Okay. And do that the other good. dice matter or just the highest one? Only the highest one. That's a 10. Uh, and sorry, what did you got, sister? Hey. Sister Ageha, you probe deeper into that that memory, and it sort of plays out on your brain like a typewriter, scrawling these words into your mind. You know that the three gray sages are a sort of demi-deity triumvirate who preside over the the domain of Secrets, hidden knowledge, and the revealing of ancient, like, ancient old languages that have been long since dead to very specific and special recipients. They are neither good nor bad, neither natural nor man-made. They simply exist as information. The Arcanists are the the cult that follows them. Alright. So, uh, does Agaha tell us this in character or, or, or? That depends, Agaha. Well, first I would glance to the others and see if there is a similar spark of recognition with them. You can read pretty quickly that there is not. Then I would curiously cock my head and furrow my eyebrows. Are we not going to discuss that? Discuss that? what? The cult that's following us? So I thought they appeared ahead of us on the path. And then it sounds like they pointed at us and then left? That's correct. They sort of beckoned you deeper into the wood. They are on the path you were taking. Which now has a sinkhole between us and them, but since we didn't fall in it, we can go around? Or is, like, that path closed? That's correct. Now? You could definitely go around. Though, once you look back down at that sinkhole again, you do note that there is 
something strange about it. It's a, a sort of vague, maybe reddish flickering light, just barely perceptible further down in the, the collapsed cave. I want to try and do something clever. Are we allowed to use uh, any cantrips that we might have learned in the classroom? Make a case for it, and sure. What I want to do is see into the sinkhole. So what I would like to do is cast light on one of my arrows and fire it down. Go ahead and make a spirit check for me at threshold six. All right, that's nice. That is a one, a four, and a four. That's a failure. You reach into your quiver, pull an arrow out, and imbue it with light. You fire it down into the sort of uh, collapsed tunnel, and it buries itself under some loose earth and does not shed any light on account of it being covered. Rip. The cantrip worked. It was just a bad shot. That makes sense. I have to have the perception of a ferret. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Could I? <laughs> Could I try this again, but on one of our dear knight's arrows and let her take a shot? suppose you could give it a shot if you like. Knight Gardenia, if you are willing to make that shot, you'll need to make a wits check to aim better. And of course, uh, if I could have a uh, spirit check from you as well, Sister Ageha. That's what I'm counting on. So let's say on. threshold six for Ageha and threshold six for Knight Gardenia. Okay. That is a five, a seven, and a ten. Okay. Um... My highest was a 10. Very good. This time, working a little bit better together, uh, Night Gardenia, you pull the arrow back on your bowstring, and as it reaches the, the spot where it would be fired from, uh, Sister Ageha, you reach forward and tap it with a finger, and it bursts into a, uh, a luminescence. The shot fires down and sticks into an exposed tree root further in, and you can see that this tunnel seems to be a natural, uh, like a naturally made erosion tunnel. Uh, a little tiny trickle of water, perhaps, had created this tunnel over eons, millennia, and only just recently have the roots of the forest grown above the tunnel enough to have eroded downwards and caused the sinkhole. But you can also see that in this tunnel, Despite it being completely naturally made, there is signs of regular passage by people on foot. Hmm. What about that little red light that we saw before? Now that the light of the arrow is down there, it's difficult to make it out. It was a very dim red light. Damn it. It seems to have been coming from further down in the tunnel. I know a Terminator so, when I see one. What's a Terminator? No clue. Lawler looks directly into the camera and grins. <laughs> <laughs> so we have found a tunnel with signs of potential activity. We also have a map with that we know should lead us to three clues, and we know that this forest contains the object that we seek. We do not You also know... would wager that where you are standing right now corresponds roughly to the first circle. So maybe and we we're being harmed by a cult that deifies secret knowledge and uncovering it. Sounds like my kind of cult. I say <clears throat> to myself. <clears throat> <laughs> Sounds like you're susceptible to cults. <laughs> you are not immune to propaganda. <laughs> Everyone Let loves us a cult. Never to be immune to propaganda. <laughs> Huh? Oh, uh, 
your choices are to go back where you came from, which is a bad choice, to continue around the sinkhole and go in the direction of this cult, or to go down into this tunnel and see where it leads. Due to both it potentially being the thing marked on our map and that people have been using it for a purpose and organized people with secret tunnels might be the type of people to steal ancient artifacts. Secret tunnel. Secret <laughs> tunnel. Magical mysteries. The forest. <laughs> I'm inclined to perhaps enter the tunnel now that we can do so safely, but... Can we do I'm... so safely, or is it still rather steep? Should I be getting out my bundle of rope and a couple of pittance? Now that the sinkhole has sort of settled, you are able to... It's it's somewhat steep, but you're able to climb down unassisted. Though, if you had <sighs> fallen in, you perhaps would have gone through a little bit more of uh, physical issues. I love physical issues. Let's go. <laughs> Then, I'm, down, I don't I'm love this way down. Tunnel. issues, but I'm willing to go regardless. <laughs> Are you coming, Lawler? Uh, Lawler nods their head gleefully, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit too excited at the prospect at the prospect of meeting these mysterious sages, and attempts to follow along after you, which I imagine may be difficult since they've only just gone used to being able to stand much less walk <laughs> we can tell the only one for yeah. whom it's difficult down down and down into the tunnel you are able to pick up both of the arrows now both of which still are shedding light and light your way further into the inky blackness you're down 20 maybe 30 meters now into the dark depths. The air down here is moist, heavy, thick with a sort of coppery flavor. Yeah. Woo! When suddenly, the passage opens up. The dominating factor in this place, the only thing that you can look at is the gnarly altar on a raised portion of ground and the flat stone wall behind it, both of which are slathered in a thick layer of red-brown blood. At the altar, another vaguely humanoid figure in a dirty black robe holds a large paintbrush in one hand, dipping it into a rusty bucket and then dragging it across the surface of the altar again, painting it with another layer of the thick red blood from within the bucket. The oh, warm, sickening scent is nauseating. I don't like it here. Maybe the path was better instead. <laughs> Where are my 20s? <laughs> I need to, are you I making need to a, a wisdom saving throw? Lawler gawks <laughs> at the at the blood smeared all over the all over the altar and also at the figure Fantastic. Squ I shout, that's disgusting! Oh no! <laughs> the figure with the paintbrush snaps its head back. What are you doing here? Esteemed guests, yes, of course. Here to pay your tribute to the altar. Welcome and welcome, yes. Willing sacrifices make for the best paint. Something tells me this is not Figure. Bob Ross. <laughs> none of this uh, the figure makes sets... me happy. It's all, none of it is a happy accident. The figure sets the bucket and brush down and motions toward the altar before sliding a wicked-looking ceremonial knife. The blade curved, serrated, and hooked out from underneath the robes. You should be afraid of the pain, of course. But she wants your fear. Your fear, like a current, rushes through your body. It makes your heart pound, renders your veins rich and full. 
She lavishes. lavishes. She eternally seeks. And can I you attack during this monologue? Can I shoot? Can I roll to shoot with my gun? <laughs> attack during the monologue. <laughs> I'll just draw an arrow and say, I'm not afraid, I'm disgusted. As he continues his villainous monologue, all three of you go ahead and uh, make an attack with your preferred weapon. Uh, so your two hit is the number of dice that you'll be the number of dice that you'll be rolling, and uh, uh, this one is going to be at threshold eight. Uh, which dice are we using for this? D tens. Anytime you make a check, it's with D tens. Okay. Okay, I thought I got the roll three D four and was like, wait, I can't hit eight with those. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, uh, okay. to hit you roll. Again, uh, threshold eight, please. Don't drop that that. Six. Nope. Uh, I got a one and a four. Kind of low. Yeah, the the scent is nauseating. It is difficult to make good aim. Yeah, my house was a seven. Ah, just so very close. Two arrows fly, and a third projectile rings out with a cracking boom sound from Lawler's range hand weapon. But all three of them go wide, slam into the painted red wall behind, and bits of, of stone break off from where Lawler's projectile hit. The two arrows clang off and clatter to the ground. And then the figure looks back, looks back at you again and says, Now I have to repaint it. <laughs> We Let's will not be for... supplying you with any more paint for that. Sorry, Let's sorry, I'm still initiative. getting uh, I'm still getting used what? to these emotions. We, I was not supposed to laugh at that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Uh so Night Gardenia, since you were the one taking point, go ahead and roll wits for me. Ooh, I'm good at wits. Your threshold is five. Oh, I dropped one of them off the table. Where did you go? Where'd you go? I miss you so. Do 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 do. Country um, What? Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, very good. Uh, so you can see the knife in one hand. He raises the paintbrush up in the other hand and starts to make a sort of arcane motion with it. But your party gets to move first. What would the three of you like to do? Fantastic. Shall we let the knight go first? I, um... So I have two options. I can get in close with my short sword, and if more of us get in close, then uh, my ability can give us an extra d4 on our damage. But I'm actually far more accurate with my crossbow, and he's wielding two melee weapons, though he's probably using going to cast the spell so you I'm are currently cool at just... range close so if you range wanted to get up into arm's length you'd have to use your movement action to do so from where you are now you cannot attack with a sword you've only got your ranged options yeah it's my i did not realize until we started playing that um my that you're better with a bow boost... My damage boost only works in, in arm's range, and all of us have ranged weapons. <laughs> but well, everyone's got as, both kinds. As a little nod to the knight, uh, assuming that this is a shared turn the way that you uh, spoke earlier, uh, I'm just going to give her a little grin, and I'm going to toss my short bow aside and take out the warhammer. <laughs> Lawler roots around in their robes for anything to use besides the handgun and pulls out what appears to be a small letter opener which shines like the sun with divine light. Wonderful. I call it smite. <laughs> all right, we're all ready to get up and get stabby or smashy. So in that case... He, he's wielding a knife, he's wielding a brush, and I just want to dash into melee range and kind of 
throw off his stance and, and get a stabby in there. All right. You use your movement to dash forward. You are in arm's reach of him now. Go ahead and roll an attack with your short sword. Uh, this will be at threshold six. Well, fortunately, I rolled a ten. Nice. Nice. Go I ahead and roll 11, a d6 for damage. I get the one to hit. Um, and uh, that's I... how many dice you are rolling. Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, I only yeah. rolled the one and I got a ten. Um, Very good. And my allies within arm's reach, so that doesn't include me. I'm not an ally Correct. of myself. I mean, I am an ally of myself, but no damage but boost. This is a, yeah, this is a damage boost that your allies who are close to you will get. It's a sort of like aura, like a paladin might have. Yes. Um, I will deal four stabby damage. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you dash forward, and he sort of swings the brush at you. Little flecks of this kind of gross blood splattering against your shoulder as you duck under and put the point of your sword under, like, between two of his ribs and plunge it in two or three centimeters. You pull it back out. You can tell that was not comfortable for him. I was Lawler not and Sister Ageha? <laughs> I will give a little flourish of my hammer and uh, give a smile to Lawler, if you would allow me the honors. And then without waiting for any kind of response, I'm going to dash forward <laughs> and smash the man with my hammer. Very good, very good. Go ahead and uh, make your attack with the hammer. Clerics will ask, is anyone going to smash that and not wait for an and answer? Not wait. <laughs> so that's an eight and a six. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the melee threshold is six. You, you uh, connect with him solidly. Go ahead and do your damage. Fantastic. And my damage is 1d6. Whoop, I dropped it. That's a 2. That's that's a 2. You dash forward damage. and bring the hammer up. It glances against his hip, slides up under the, the blade that Knight Gardenia had just put there, and takes another sort of like run up the, the, the ribs like a grim, horrible xylophone. Uh, and it throws him sort of off of his balance onto his back foot. Oh, look, we can make sweet music together. <laughs> Lala, did you, what you add got? the d4 to your damage? Oh, that's true, because oh, of the damage I did not. boost. Okay, so that was two plus. I need a d4. Get out your triangles. Get out my triangles. The most dangerous die. <laughs> All right, I have a nice pretty blue one. So add two to that. Hey, not bad at all. So it uh, clips him on the hip, drags against his ribs, and then clips him again on the chin. Delicious. He is, he is certainly disoriented by it. Lala, Lola, what have you got? Lola smiles a wicked smile and then asks, and then asks coolly, do you listen to Huey Lewis and the news? The cultist kind of screws his face up and looks back and says, What? Don't worry about it. Sit still. Stand still for me. I roll an 8 and a 7. Oh, brilliant. Delicious. Uh, yeah, you slide forward on these curiously springy and sprightly legs that you have and just line up the point and put it directly under the the bottom of his sternum right between the ribs uh and he looks down and gasps do your damage uh what's my damage boost again uh you're you'll be rolling an extra d4 in addition to the let's see for your 1D4? smite it's a 1d4 so 2d4 total oh 2d4s all right let me get another d4 for this real quick the glow in the dark one Ooh. Hey, so I got a blood that tracks for you. <laughs> I got a bloody red one here and a glow in the dark one. One second. Here we go. That's the first time I'm using these dice too. Nice. So that's a one and a four. So five. Hey. Mm -hmm. Nice. Your 
the, the point of the knife slides into him all the way up to the hilt, and you see his eyes bulge out for a moment. He coughs, sputters blood out of his mouth, and it runs down his chin, and he stumbles back off the point of your knife, toppling over onto the altar and laying there on his back for a moment as the blood seeps out of his body onto the altar, and his eyes go blank. He didn't even get to do anything. <laughs> ha ha! But as the blood seeps out onto the altar, the wall behind it starts to shimmer, and a face no. takes shape. No. Oh no. Well. No, 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 no. no. This is surprising. Pray no. speed, the Omnissiah. Oh, that's... Oh, darling, you've got it all wrong. My name is Eltabeth de Song. And you've just killed my poor little painter. I would like to try and wipe the altar clean as she's speaking. <laughs> Go ahead and, uh... <laughs> Please. Make... Can I roll to shoot the Let, face? I'm trying to hang up I... on her. <laughs> no cult. No uh, cult. <laughs> um, okay. Lols, go ahead and uh, make a make a wits check for me at threshold five. You're shooting a wall. It should not be difficult. <laughs> uh, and then Sister Ageha and Night Gardenia, both of you make body checks at threshold six together for me, please. Don't worry. I rolled a nine and a six. A 69, if nice, you will. Nice, nice, nice. That's a seven and a nine. Am I actually cleaning the altar? I sort of just maybe want to shove the body off of it so it no longer counts as an offering. <laughs> you, you shove the body, I clean it. I take off my cape and I start scrubbing. Can't put more blood on the altar if the, the source is off the altar. Oh, is wonderful. it a different check to shove a corpse? While the cleric and no, I attempt... Be body. While the okay. cleric and the... While the cleric and the knight attempt to clean off the altar, uh, Lawler just sort of shoots the wall where the face is talking, and I'm presuming it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> Lawler, you flick your gun up with a cool flourish and pull the trigger. A bullet flies out of the end of it with a, a horrifyingly loud crack in this, this sort of contained cave, and shatters a portion of the, the stone wall right between the face's eyes. At the same time, uh, S Sister Ageha, you drag your cloak across the now-cleared altar that Night Gardenia had pushed the corpse off of, and the face kind of distorts for a moment, as though it were uh, being, like, detuned, almost. And the face says, no, no, wait. This isn't, this won't do at all. You've done me a, f a favor. Just not today, Satan. Listen. <laughs> Fantastic. I whip the cloak, cast prestidigitation so it's clean, and I keep wiping. Sorry, lady. I played System Shock 2. <laughs> and with the, the effort, with the effort that you have made to distract the face push the, the corpse off and clean off the blood, you find the face kind of shimmers out and disappears. Man, and for a moment there, I thought there wasn't any AI living in this universe. Currently, your test score is five. The Wonderful. audience seems to, have, uh, seems to have put you on a good place. I'm glad the audience approves of us not giving evil corrupted forces the chance to make their tempting offers. <laughs> Why make wisdom saves when you can just say no? <laughs> there's no stronger oh, there's no stronger defense against corrupting forces than uh what? what's the phrase? There's a phrase for it. Genre savvy. <laughs> Very good. Rejection of the call? Mm, that too. That tracks. Hanging so... up the phone? <sighs> Not going so outside? Up on her. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't make her very happy. Um, um, 
she did Let's definitely say that was her painter so yeah. i don't i do not feel like doing services for her in particular considering the services others in her employ are are setting out to do so is there anything doing. else in this tunnel or else it seems like we have made the world one weird cultist safer and we continue on. I think we should destroy <laughs> the altar so this can't happen again. The mind is willing, but the flesh uh, is weak. Thankfully, I have no flesh. Oh, wait. I do currently. <laughs> you do temporarily. He pokes himself in the biceps. Uh, would each of you kindly make a wits check for me at threshold six? Okay. A wits, huh? A wits save. That's bad. <laughs> I, got a I got a four and a seven. Hey, not bad. All of you uh, have passed that check. In the aftermath of this possible cult summoning uh, that you managed to avert, you take a look around this chamber, and aside from the horrible coppery smell and the bucket of slightly spoiled congealed blood, uh, you find that the cultist's body, in addition to having that wicked serrated knife, he also had a rolled up piece of vellum inside of a leather case. Huh. On the piece of vellum, as you take it out and inspect it, you see that there is a series of glyphs scrawled in an order that makes it look like this is uh, some kind of, perhaps, written language or cipher. Does anyone, or would anyone verifiably, uh, be able to speak infernal? Not even a chance. Can I attempt to read it, even though I can't speak infernal? Search the Why database. not make a spirit check? Let's say threshold... Let's say threshold eight for this one. It's difficult. Does anyone have comprehend languages? I got threes. Two threes. Wait, is this spirit or check? Threes. Wait, is this spirit check or what's check? Spirit, please. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, let me reroll then. Watch uh, your language. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Three dice. Uh, Six, four, and a seven, so I still don't make it. Ah, so close. Um... You are just on the threshold of being able to find something in your your vast memory of this sort of thing. Um, the best that you can do is looking at it, you kind of plug it into a Google Translate, and it gives you <laughs> a, a broken series of, of related words. Um, you get something to the effect of not a place of honor. <laughs> not a place of sanctity. And something like uh, a word that might mean swamp or, or fen or marsh. You mean to tell me this is you not do? my swamp? <gasps> the gnarly place in the bayou. You you gather that this might be one of the clues you are looking for. Can I mark not this? in a place of honor, not in a place of sanctity. Something brackish. Can I stick a sancti a sanctity scroll to this place of to this place that is not a place of honor? You actually do have a sanctity scroll in your inventory. Go ahead and roll one more d10 for me, please. Let's set it at threshold six. I has a ten. <laughs> Hold on, I went, I went to go look at this, and I have to, for the sake of the audience, relay that the sanctity scroll listed in the inventory is, and I quote, full of Navy SEALs copy pasta. But this is a different copy pasta, where no highly esteemed deed is commemorated here. The copy pasta that the scroll uh, depicts 
has a a sort of resonance with this because some of them seem to have been like posted next to each other on eldritch forums of of forbidden knowledge and as you look at it through the context of the scroll it finally resolves itself what you Places seek is not shot. in a place of honor nor in a place of sanctity the ground is wet and your boots will fill with brackish fen before you see your goal. You seek a swamp. Can't Something believe me there's a lot of those around here. I have a feeling that the big bad is actually a giant green ogre. <laughs> and what gives What's you that idea? Out? First clue is unhonorable swamp. Wait a second. Yeah, do we know this? Do Does we that know mean this? Yoda will us? be there too? <laughs> will they go on a beach? <laughs> 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 What have you done? I'd suggest that perhaps this wasn't blood, but Kool-Aid, but I see no signs of ash oh my God, Stop! I, 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 I will now taste this blood. <laughs> stop! You're really out of curiosity. I completely Lawler, thought make a you body were... check. No, I'm oh, going to body no. check him. <laughs> oh. Threshold six body check. I please. rolled a two. Can I see oh. him doing this? I would love to stop him. I would also yeah, like um, to stop him. You, you, the both of you watch as Lawler sort of like tentatively uh, reaches out and dips two fingers in the blood and reaches up like it's like he's going to put it in their mouth. And both of you simultaneously his slap his sand away, slap his hand away. <laughs> Owie. No, bad AI. Bad. No. I've already oh, inflicted goodness. enough psychic damage. I do not seek to inflict <laughs> actual <laughs> physical damage as well. Don't do that. Let, let us leave the horror of the Kool Aid Man and Ash Ketchum in the alternate universe where it sits. <laughs> This place is best shunned and left uninhabited. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, after a quick destruction of the altar, like you had mentioned, which is not difficult given the gigantic hammer that Sister Ageha has with her, um, you her are able love to... <laughs> Very good. Love, love tap taps a little love into the <laughs> altar and reduces it into... Uh, Smithery. Old bloody rubble. Let's see. Little bit of love. Lulz shoots you... fireworks into the air into the dank air with both of her hands and says, Praise the Omnissiah. <laughs> what are you on about? In indeed, perhaps a, a a fell deity of foreign lands. But uh, the three of you manage to clamber back up out of the tunnel onto the path again. There Wait. is no sign of the Arcanists. Where is the next closest dot on our map? Well, looking at where you are on your map now, there's another one that is somewhat close uh, to the sort of northwest. Uh, there's another one that is of a similar... Pardon me. Of a similar distance to the like north by northwest, uh, and then there's another one that is north by northeast of where you are. Those are the three closest. There's another one that's a little bit further away. So I choices. All right, all right, all right. Um, those are the circles that are close to us. Uh, this one, can we? This one. And this one. Mm -hmm. I would like to compare to my bark skin map, uh, which seems like the best direction to uh, our nearest clue. Given what you know with your map, you can rule out this uh, mark entirely. Were you not to ask for the map at the beginning, this would be a significantly more difficult navigation to get where you're going. Fantastic. I am going Wonderful. to not there. And we have been uh, 
let's see this you little bubble was the city here yes. and here so correct a little heart where the village is and let's see red for blood tunnel this is hard with a cursor <laughs> You are doing exceptionally well, though. It is looking good. And also, go. the realization that I can doodle on this map is... Uh... It will help for uh, group note-taking. Absolutely. Okay, so... So we're going to the crossed-out one. So then we have two other... The left and the right, essentially. Yep, either here or here. Hmm. Um, the path on the right, the dots along that path seem a bit closer together than if we go left, so I'm inclined to go right. That sounds like okay. a plan. I'm willing to, uh, give it a shot. Wonderful. Lawler, if we come across any more loose blood, don't lick it. Okay. <laughs> but I thought humans need blood to live. We uh, make our own. You can make blood? Yes. Passively. With this, too, revolution, <laughs> with this revelation fresh in Lawler's mind, who is taking up the navigation for this next leg? I am like... all right doing ten. I would like to give navigation a go. In that case, the floor is yours. I thought you were going to Wonderful. say the floor is lava, and I was about to be very concerned. No, the floor <laughs> is wet, apparently. With a lot of blood. All right, what am I rolling, dearest professor? Would you kindly roll me two d8s, please, and tell me what each of them are? Two d8s. I will roll my two sparkly pink ones, and I drop one. That's not a good sign. That's a bad omen. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my fairy die. <laughs> what will you do? Fly, fairy die, fly. Okay, that is a six and an eight. Ah, very good. Let me roll me some nervous. dice on my side. Just go ahead and. Uh, I never good. trust high rolling when it comes to navigation. <laughs> that just seems bad. And. Yikes. Okay. Oh no. Yikes is bad. Please don't say yikes. <laughs> it takes you the better part of three or four hours traipsing through the heavy undergrowth. Before anything else, you notice the smell. It's an acrid, musty sort of ozone scent, very different from the scent of stale blood that you had found yourself in earlier. But this scent begins to pervade the air around you. And you notice that the plants along your path start to be different somehow. Something feels off. The colors are not quite right, maybe. Hmm. Up ahead, you see the polished stone walls of what appears to be another perfect dome jutting out from the forest floor with an iris on the top and a sliding door facing you just slightly ajar. From within, a sickly ruby red light pulses. The door slides open just barely more and you hear the sounds of electricity come from inside. The smell, as you get closer, becomes stronger and stronger like the smell of ozone. And as you approach, you can see, crowded around this slightly open door, is a large group, ten, maybe fifteen, of these tall, animalistic-looking figures. No. Each of them maybe seven, eight feet tall, each wrapped in this series of pelts and skins and 
bedecked with feathers, each holding a long, cruel-looking weapon with some kind of blade or hook or spike at the end of it. And one of them, a full three feet taller than the others, a lion's mane around its head, standing in the center. Oh dear god, I know what these are, Lol says from the back. We're entering a furry convention. <laughs> I slap Lawler on the uh, back of the head. Ow. So they're on the uh, other side of this fairly open door, so... Is being able to make They are still outside, outside of it. Okay, they are outside of it. So I was gonna Correct. say, uh, there's so many people outside the door. <laughs> Have we gone in? Because I don't want them to see me come in. Um, no, you, said you stand a... on... Go ahead. You said there's an iris on the top of the dome? Correct. It's like That's... a sort of, uh, like a like an eye uh, that can sort of, like, grow or shrink depending on how much light is touching it. Okay, so not the flower. Uh, not that kind of iris. Uh, like an eyeball sort of iris. Does, does it, it doesn't look like a real eye, does it? It's just shaped like an eye? No, the more you look at it, the more you see that it is a mechanical iris. Oh, thank you, the stars. Okay, mechanical, so shooting an arrow into it will probably not eliminate that. Aha! Uh -huh. Finally, something that I understand in this universe. Get it? <laughs> I? Ha ha. Uh, ha ha. I need to, I need to shop that. <laughs> points from you. Your uh, test score is six right now. I'm just going to go ahead and take all six away. No, no that no. is a joke. <laughs> I'm so uh, good. Can I roll to... Oh. Can I investigate this eye? Uh, from where you are standing, you are maybe 30 or 40 feet away from the edge of the dome, and the dome is quite large. Oh. Uh, it might be pretty difficult for you to for you to get a good look at it, but you can try. I guess it doesn't hurt to try, right? Yeah, why not? Go ahead and make a wits check for me at threshold eight, please. Okay. Which of these dice to use? Two dice for uh, wits. Be a... Very good. I got a ten and a two. Hey, hey, very good. Um, You sort of, like, focus and uh, you drag your thumb up the inside of the brain that is your camera, and it zooms in just a little bit get a little bit more uh, detail out of it. And you can tell that this is a sort of mechanical, uh, like a camera lens almost. When you twist it forward, it closes, and when you twist it back, it opens up sort of thing. Uh, you can tell that it seems to be stuck in the position that it is in right now, and uh, there's like forest detritus and and like animal droppings and all kind of stuff up on top of it to note that it does not seem to have moved in quite a long time so does this mean that if lawler pats his head and rubs his tummy he takes a screenshot <laughs> <laughs> let's find out <laughs> amazing oh, no. Can I actually try that? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'm uh, kidding. You don't need you to hear do that. You hear a little... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so we've unlocked brilliant. your photographic memory, but only if you pat your head and rub your tummy. <laughs> <laughs> have I have I heard this little chink? Everyone hears it. Fantastic. I'm going to pull my phone out of my pocket and check my pictures. The mean uh, shit. Yeah, within... You yeah, within the the uh, photo repository that you have available here, you have a screen like a, a a photograph of the top of this iris. The machine Disgusting. spirit is rolling. I show gardenia. <laughs> <laughs> we can record clues or suspicious things we find. I'm thinking. What are you actually useful? Ability. Listen, if you speak it into existence and there is a, a reason for it to be that way, it is that way. I am this type of dungeon master. 
Um, but as the kachik sound happens, you note that several of these beast folk all look over in your direction. Holy shit. Oh, excuse me. Whoopsies. Holy. The one uh, punished stuff hubris. from 30 meters the, away. The, the <laughs> one with the lion's mane, both of the, the sort of ears that are on it focus in your direction and he raises up his weapon and then points points it to the ground and plants it into the ground and then raises both hands up and you can hear from far away a bellowing voice we mean peace do you mean peace i will draw my sword and then i will i will step out if we were like hiding to observe them i will step out Draw my sword, place it into the ground. I will take my warhammer off of my back, and I will gently lay it on the ground and raise my hands. I watch my companions do or do both of these and attempt to emulate them, and I take out my small letter opener and also stick it in the ground, but I leave my holy hand cannon uh, somewhere in my robes and also raise my hands. Absolutely. Several of these beastmen kind of fan out in a semicircle around the leader, and uh, each of them kind of has a like a box in their hands. There's four of them, and the the leader sort of motions for you to come near, and the the voice bellows out from him again, says, "We are traders. Are you traders as well?" Given that we've already made our display of peace, I would I would like to put my hammer back and take a tentative step forward and see if they're cool with that. They seem to be cool with it. Fantastic. I will uh, remove my sword from the ground, chief it, say, I do not think we have much to offer, but... Perhaps there is something we could trade for. Mm -hmm. You seem to be from a far distant land. What mm -hmm. exotic artifacts do you have with you? And he motions and one of these uh, beast folk opens up the box in front of them and you can see on the inside there is a shimmering sort of glass white rose sitting on like a, a red velvet oh. pillow pretty i am immediately he motions, enamored he motions and another one opens up the box and on the inside there is a, a like a gigantic softball sized heart shaped locket on a <gasps> on a big gold chain i'm immediately enamored he motions to the third, and they open up their box, and inside there is a weathered-looking deck of cards with a, cards. like a silver band around it. And he motions to the fourth, and inside that box there is a what looks to be like a wristband of some sort with a, a circular dial on the top of it that has uh, what appears to be like lightning bolt motif. A watch? A watch? A watch? It's a watch. It's a watch. <laughs> well, on one hand, there's a flower, and I have a flower motif. On the other hand, cards. And I was going cards. to joke, if I have anything on me, I was going to turn around and grab some training cards from behind me. I have a few extra copies of uh, SP Deftalica. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. We, uh, if it is cards to trade, we're only looking for EX Charizard right now. <laughs> well, what manner of artifacts are these? Artifacts Hi. of great magical power. Choose one. We will stow the rest. And we will trade. One each or one for all of us? 
the there's a sort of like hushed murmur behind. Uh, go ahead and make a spirit check for me at threshold uh, threshold eight. I would like to assist with this. I too um, will assist absolutely. with this. Because I have invigorating oh, with... chant that oh. can assist by giving a bonus uh, d10 to Gardenia. Oh, my bad. I don't have okay. that. <laughs> That's d10. Uh, you can use your invigorating chant to uh, reach within yourself, spend two of your vigor, and uh, let's see. You'd be rolling spirit against it, but it is almost impossible for you to fail with only one target, so let's just say that you are good for it. Fantastic. Then I will do that. Seven, and that will take my vigor to six. Wonderful. Uh, that will, get... will give an extra d10 to that check. Mm -hmm. uh, so I rolled three d10, and all of them are bad. <laughs> so the highest. Well, what, was uh, a... what's the highest? Three. Wow. 3d10 and the really? highest was a three. The other two are Even both with the ones. Dang, that's Impressive. terrible luck. Oh, that's a that that's a critical failure if I've ever heard of one. I mean, Dollar oh boy. suggested also wanting to help. I just realized I don't have an invigorating chance, so I actually can't. Yeah, there's uh, there's not much in the way of uh, an ability that uh, Lawler has that would be able to help with this one. Rip. Um. After the the conference for a moment, uh, the leader speaks up and says, We will trade one artifact. Understood. So you've got a glass flower, a big gold heart locket, a deck of cards, and a watch. Um, How badly does it look like Gardenia wants the rose? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to possibly trade something in my, or see if something in my, if they would want something in my pack for an additional item. Uh, you gather that the, the number of items is no, no longer negotiable. Oh, rip. I, I screwed up the negotiations. My apologies. I mean, uh, these do seem like very precious items. I can see why they would be loafed apart with too many at once. I give the knight a pat on your shoulder. I want to do the same thing and a little reassuring smile. Aw, oh, thank you guys. <laughs> uh, I think the, as much as I'd love to make this decision purely on aesthetics and the amount of joy sparked, uh, can I make some sort of check to assess the magical abilities of these artifacts? Knight Gardenia, do you have any training in recognizing magic? I've gone to some of your streams. <laughs> May I attempt? You caught me. That counts. Go ahead and make <laughs> a wits check for me at oh. threshold eight, please. Let's go. It counts. Ooh, that's a good one. Nice. Yeah, I suppose. Um, oh, we'll give it the uh, artificers uh, open table. That's true. I got a nine. Ho, ho, ho. Well done. Um, you might be teacher. able... Hey, well, I don't <laughs> mean to toot my own horn. Uh, you, you think that you might be able to discern what one of these artifacts might do. Okay, so... My temptation, not just as a person who loves card games too much, but also as a D&D &D player who <laughs> fears the deck of many things. <laughs> I'm tempted to, to search in the deck, but um, I've also heard that I'm not the only one interested in the flower, and then we also have a cool locket and a watch, so uh, which of these should I examine? Make your choice. Choosing is hard. I would like the the agreement on my teammates. Hmm. Since we will get to share our new toy. I would 
it's a it's a worn looking deck yes it's seen use it has definitely seen quite a bit of use. It looks like this has been uh, passed through several hands. So it's not something where the cards are used once they're used. It doesn't look like they disappear. It's probably not a deck of many things. I so. would personally... Ag even against my own bias, I would be curious about the locket as a magical ar artifact that is capable of storing something sounds very powerful. I also like the locket because it can be worn, and that implies passive effect and also just convenient to wield. What do you think, Baller? I think I agree with both of you, although now I'm curious if the watch has any time-based applications. True, time is very cool, and it is similarly wearable. I'm also guessing it is potentially a uh, lawler bait. <laughs> I think it's lawler bait. <laughs> so I was not the only one who thought these items were, ca were catered towards the three of us individually. <laughs> Oh, why would I do something like that? <laughs> well, We're shaking one, and we can why. only grab one. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I actually don't have any strong feelings one area or another, so I'm more than willing to go with whatever you two decide. Um, time is incredibly powerful, but also heart-shaped locket could potentially mean HP. And also, mm -hmm. Akeha's, um icon in here is the little heart emote. <laughs> looking at it so oh my gosh i just got a raider wildflower hey very nice welcome raiders well, and soro soggy did you have your whole stardew complain raid me <laughs> <laughs> um whilst uh given that i imagine the scene is gardenia um ascertaining the different artifacts uh, in case the tribe appears to be getting antsy. Uh, I mm. would like to, um, a as, as she is investigating um, the, the leader, I would like to uh, hand over my chain mail and discuss the value of it with him and if he would like uh this as a trade um mm -hmm. it could assist you and your tribe in various uh medicinal ways it is good for a healer and uh it is i'm gonna spin it like uh it creates uh it encourages a pure heart and that you mm -hmm. cannot lie when wearing it. All right, uh, go ahead and make a spirit check for me at threshold six. Fantastic. That is a six, a six, and a six. Wow, triple six is on triple the threshold. Sixes. That's on the holy of numbers. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty good on that one. Um, the leader sort of holds it up with one hand and then looks back and uh, scurrying forward from the group a smaller uh, figure one that seems to have like a like a goat's pelt over their shoulders and the the horns on top of their head uh, sort of comes forward and reaches up a, a like a fur paw hand and like brushes against it and the leader nods and says this will make for a wonderful trade. Choose the artifact you like. That seems very particularly worded. Choose the artifact I like. I think he's basically saying we still only get one, but now the price of it has been decided. Mm-hmm. You gather that that's probably the case. I'm still so, very careful. So, uh, currently, your setup, 
Okay. Uh, currently, your setup is you can identify one before you choose which of the four you take. Mm -hmm. Now that I have these raiders, I'm tempted to have them make the decision for me, but I also don't want to spend forever here because there's so much more adventure to do. So we <laughs> have a a white crystalline flower. We have a, a heart-shaped locket. We have a, a worn deck of cards, and we have a lightning motif watch. Um, I'm, we have mostly been between the, the watch and the locket, so I think maybe I will identify the watch because I think it has the potential to have the most powerful ability, and if it turns out to be underwhelming or unfitting, then I will take the locket instead. You look down at the watch, and you see the hands on the watch sort of, like, move forward, but then suddenly are back where they were and move backwards, and then suddenly switch to a different place. You gather that this artifact can, at the cost of three vigor, completely reset a place to exactly how it was one hour before. Okay, wow. Well. That, this could... includes any people or or uh, living things that are in that place as well. So we can set things back an hour. That's a very heavy cost, and this is a forest, so we don't have a lot of context on things that could have been there an hour before. We we aren't like actively chasing someone and could set them back so that we could catch them. And I hope I don't want to bet on us screwing something up so bad that we need to reset it. I mean we did a wonderful job of uh handling almost summoning a weird blood deity. So <laughs> I Time feel like is a difficult measure in a liminal space. I want to say that could potentially be very powerful, but it's a high cost, and I don't want to anticipate we will need it. And I still like the idea that the, the heart-shaped locket will do the opposite of costing lots of health. So I'm tempted for the locket, especially since we are giving up armor in exchange. All right. Are you guys all right with with that decision sounds good to me i nod looking a little more excited than i should since it would have been my <laughs> first pick anyway <laughs> i was feeling that with how much that watch costs i think that if we are ever at a situation that would require turning back time we're probably going to be low in health anyway so yeah uh, real right. If it doesn't reset the actions that hurt us in the first place, that's kind of, yeah. yeah. If it could, like, undo something that happened, like you fell into a trap, if you could undo falling into it and taking a bunch of damage, that'd be another story. But this just resets the place oh, and not Don't the misunderstand. Us. Yeah, it actually would reset you out of a trap. If you got okay. stabbed, it would unstab you. It so it resets it time itself. But that would it we would still need to be able to take three damage on top of being stabbed and wanting to undo it. So our net gains would be pretty limited. So I think I'm still good with taking the the locket. You reach forward and your fingers close around the gold chain holding the locket. Instantly, the other three boxes snap shut and disappear into the hides and robes, and the group closes in on itself. The leader makes a grand gesture with one hand, picks his weapon back up out of the ground, and sets it on his shoulder and says, Should we meet again? We meet as brothers. And the whole group instantly scatters into the woods. Oh no, I wanted to- oh, okay. I wanted to thank them too. The locket that you hold in your hand works like this. Anytime someone within close range or closer would take damage, you can instead 
put that damage inside the locket. Ooh. The locket will hold six damage. If the locket exceeds six damage, it will explode. And everyone nearby will take all six. Oh, shit. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so uh, we have it absorb as close to five damage as we can get it, and then we toss it into the woods. Oh, uh, you know so that pretty. it recharges when you rest. Oh. Or we just don't use it and let it recharge. So I feel like I should not be the one carrying this because I already have a skill that reduces damage taken by my allies. I'll take it. Okay. Because then if I take damage, you can reduce my damage. Mm -hmm. And if you take damage, I can reduce yours. Wait, is it only... I mean, I can reduce your damage at the cost of some of my health, but if I take damage, you go straight to the locket, right? That's how this works? You can choose you can to choose. have it go to the locket. Oh, you choose. Oh, so they... It's not automatic. So Correct. it only takes the user's, the, the wielder's damage. Uh, anyone no, anyone, with, anyone who close is close to okay. the, the user, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. okay. That's, that works. So when someone takes damage, you can instead choose to take that damage into the locket. But if it goes over the amount of six, the locket blows up and everyone takes damage. Unless I Maybe like... Ageha should take the locket because you can heal people's damage. I can reduce people's damage, but Ageha cannot do either of those things. So then we all have a way to reduce other people's damage. That works. I am standing in Moment. place, but if you look very closely, you can tell that I am bouncing. I am trying <laughs> to suppress a grin. <laughs> it is not working. I light um, vibration. I take vibrating. out my sword and I softly place it, uh, tap it against both your shoulders and bestow upon you the cute heart-shaped locket. I scream out loud, happily, <laughs> joyfully, and I put the locket on. Oh, brilliant. You have a new artifact at the cost of your old truth-telling armor. I hope that it serves the tribe well. With that many people, uh, healers, I, I feel like it was a good thing to give to them. It makes right. sense. So, uh, you still stand outside of this uh, perfect stone dome, the door of which is slightly <laughs> open, and inside it pulses a sickly red light. You can choose to do something with that, or you can go to another place. Well, sickly red light did find us a clue last time. This does not appear to be a swamp, but we are still two clues short. Mm. Should we try firing more arrows into the darkness? Uh, it's Within not time. dark inside. You can actually okay. see inside. Oh, really? Then... Yeah, if you if you get close enough to actually look inside, you can see that the polished floors that were once kept immaculate are now sort of riddled with debris and detritus. Twigs, leaves, dirt. An occasional bone of a small animal, maybe, litter the path forward. And everything inside is lit by that strangely weird, like, sickening red light. It's a, a hallway that goes forward and then terminates in what appears to be a set of wooden doors. Shall we? After you? After me? Go. Or... I, will, I will go. After the night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Night Guardian. Inside. The... Temperature on the inside is noticeably cooler. Not uncomfortably so, but certainly noticeable. And as you push open the wooden doors at the end of this hallway, you find yourself staring into a complicated-looking sort of laboratory, for lack of a better term. There are tables and tables of old scientific-looking 
objects and uh, books on shelves and overturned instruments. Not a single thing moves inside, but you can hear the buzz of electricity. Lawler's eyes light up. I bet they do. Is it just me, so, or is this place tingly? It definitely has a sort of static electricity feel to the air. This place makes me tingle. It's kind of ticklish. How long have we been in this fantasy world? It feels like forever since I felt the gentle hums and flows of, electric, of, uh, of electrical energy. I pretend <laughs> to check my watch. Maybe like 30 minutes. <laughs> I am not wearing a watch. Time is convoluted in this world. Hair past a freckle. <laughs> Wonderful. Freckle past beauty mark. Um, well, I don't want to touch anything in here. I, I don't know what anything does. I would like to investigate via not pressing buttons or touching things, but just taking a closer look at stuff. What's this? Stay away from my research! A voice oh. calls from many directions at once the second Professor? you step inside. <laughs> you scan around for the source of the voice. Uh, anyone who is uh, going to do a an investigation of any sort, go ahead and make a wits check for me. Threshold six. Woo! May as well. I shall do so oh, gladly. Wait. Oh boy, that's one. <laughs> okay, Did that's one guy. Someone just <laughs> tell us to stay away from it? I got a 10 and a 7. To stay away from mm -hmm. their research. That makes me think I should stop investigating and instead perhaps address the individual. Though I did just roll really good on my investigation, so... Yeah, me too. <laughs> Very good. You Ten. sort of looking around to, to catch where the, the voice is coming from, you glance and over to one side and you you see a face in a reflection on a broken piece of glass but then it's gone but then you see it again this time in the glimmering surface of a hammered metal sheet and then again on the polished surface of the work desk no no away with you all you cannot interrupt me here be gone luddites and disturb my undertaking no further what will it take for you to disappear from here forever Luddite. We, we just have some questions. Maybe you could questions? point us in the right questions, direction. Questions, questions. Everyone always wants to know my research. Not, Ask your questions. Not about research? I, um, it's nice to meet you. What is your name, sir? Ah, dispense with the niceries and ask me your questions, pink hair. Ow. That hurt me. In the heart. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize for disturbing your research. The place appeared long abandoned and we only wondered what we could glean. We are currently on a most important search. Everyone says that their search is important. What do you search for? Um... Well, a way to protect an innocent village. It is important not for our sakes, but for the sakes of others. Innocence is overrated. Are you looking for something or someone? Something. And what you... is it that you look for? Come now, I don't have all eternity. We are looking for... An artifact, a scepter of gnarled roots and red gems. Know you anything of it? Hmm. Let me search. And the face that is now on, like, the, the, the cap of a bottle uh, sort of fades back out. And you hear a humming sound as the electricity in the area intensifies for a moment. Uh, would you polite and asking nicely. Hell yeah. Pink hair. That Let's hurt, see. even though uh, it was just an observation. 
Ageha, would you kindly make a spirit check for me at threshold six? I would love to, Professor. That's my best stat. That is a ten, a ten, and a three. Ooh, oh, ooh. The face comes back. And this time it is on the sort of like semi-polished underside of a gold leaf book. And uh, it sort of like opens its mouth and says, Ah, I have found something. If I give you this information, you must forget this place exists. Do we have a deal? I, will... I am amenable to that. I... I give Night Gardenia a nod and look to Lawler. I say sure, and then I cross two of my fingers behind my back, because I just recently learned how to do that. <laughs> uh, Lawler, go ahead and make a make a wits check for me at threshold six. Here we go. A ten and a four. Hey, not so bad. Um, the second that you cross your fingers you feel like you have done something very clever. <laughs> the... Smug the, face emoji. The, the, the face kind of, like, appears again on another reflection and opens its mouth and begins to make a sort of, like, low-frequency hum. And, Lawler, you recognize this. It sounds like... The startup noise for when you were trying to log into AOL a long time ago <laughs> and your router was making sound. Oh. Um, I will address the old crone, as as it were, um, and careful with my words. I will say. I agree to those terms. Uh, there's a sort of like recognition in the eyes and it seems to make some sort of connection within the sound that it's making. And out of its, uh, like out of the, the all directions sound, a sort of encrypted message uh, is, is played out. And Lawler, as you hear it, you cannot help but accidentally translate it into common speech. What awesome. you seek is guarded, but not protected. Watched, but not valued. Those who possess it know its value, but value it not. The house is deep, surrounded by stagnation and rot. I'm terrible at args. <laughs> See, I just I can't remember that much information. I can't write that fast. Would you Guarded but it? not protected. Watched but not valued. The important part of the location is that it says the house is deep, surrounded by stagnation and rot. That Thank sounds a lot like the first hint that we got. The mouth shuts, and instantly, Lawler, you are able to stop translating this message. Uh, it was weird. He was sort of using you as a conduit. I shake my head back and forth, and be and kind of like sort of crack my fi crack my newfound fingers, and be like. So, what happened in the last uh, last 30 seconds? It appears we got another hint. It felt very similar to the last one, so I'm going to assume that was, in fact, our second clue. If you are quite finished, keep up your end of the bargain and skittle off. I have important science to do. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. We'll be out of your hair now. Nods and Lawler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have found your second hint. And we will leave. 
Yep. Wonderful. I don't think there's uh, anything this point, in there more valuable than a clue. I mean, there's a lot of broken science stuff, but at this point, let us go ahead and uh, take a quick break for uh, getting another cup of tea and some snacks oh, and God, things. Yes, please. We will come yes, back please. In... Thank you. Oh, a snack. We'll come back in a few minutes. Let's say it is currently 24 minutes after. Let's come back at exactly 30. Sounds good. If you are like back that. earlier, then you know you can you can come back. But we will start the uh, test back up once again at uh, half past. It's time for an ad break. Incidentally, how are the three of you feeling, and how much more time do you have available? Well, I've got hours, baby. Yeah, I got the whole day uh, pretty much um, set aside for this. Same here. Wonderful. Okay, well then. Okay, great. Uh, let us come back in five minutes. Let's go ahead and take a quick little break. Sounds good. See you then. See you. Chad, I'm going to go ahead and grab some wa more water and take a bathroom break, and we're going to set this to an advertisement for a short time, which is only about a minute, 30 seconds. Thanks to anyone that stopped by, by the way. Uh, how do I do this? Okay, stream manager. And we're going to push this button. One minute, one minute, three second ad break. Thank you.
<clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and turn the microphones back on. And we are back. Just like this. I Wonderful. have returned as well. Brilliant. Has everyone been able to source themselves appropriate snacks and beverages? I have found something for the time being. Um... It might also be a good idea to, uh, since we do not have to leave in the next half hour like originally scheduled, potentially, uh, perhaps reintroduce what we're doing here. And I would love to, for anyone who is uh, streaming their own POV, for their chats to be aware that they can go into yours and give us more points and higher grades. Because Absolutely. Like yeah, as soon it. as as soon as everyone's back, we'll go through and uh, do a quick recap of what's happened, what we are doing, and uh, what the audience can do to help. Wonderful. Wonderful. Night Gardenia, how are you doing so far? Are you feeling pretty good? I am. Um, I, in my other streams, I tend to spend a lot of time shouting stuff like let's go um <laughs> and so Thanks. i am excited to take this opportunity to play my character as more originally envisioned <laughs> and slightly Wonderful. less shouty very good and sister ageha you are back as well i see mm -hmm. how are you doing are you feeling good so far oh yes and i'm stuffing my face with a brioche I'm sorry that I took ah. a little bit longer than anticipated. There was a kitty that needed me. A cute little oh, cordy. Br brioche and cat are, are plenty of a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I am doing uh, once... well. I'm loving this. I am uh, glad to hear it. Once Lawler gets back, we can uh, get oh. the ball rolling once more. Sorry uh, about that. As uh... we speak. The mic was off, but I was unmuted in Discord. Forgot about that. I got a two-stage here. How wonderful. As I live and breathe. So, uh, for those of you who are just coming in to join us, my name is Cosmo Bergamot. I am the Dean of the School of Conjuration at the Teme Velt Royal Academy for the Metaphysical Arts. And we are halfway through one of the practical examinations that my dear students can uh, elect to take in order to gain access to higher level classes. My three students today are Lawler Hicks, uh, who is a, well, Lawler, why don't you go ahead and reintroduce yourself real quick. I'm an artificial intelligence meme poster that is currently stuck on Twitter, uh, stuck on Twitch. However, mm -hmm. thanks to the help of uh, Agha, I was able to enter into this examination through the use of a mobile phone. That I snuck aboard. Very good. Uh, Sister Ageha? Greetings again. I am Ageha Verkor. I am a... I am a cleric of Eros, operating outside of the Adventures Guild, uh, running my own little clinic. I am the head physician, currently. I'm sure I will be replaced one day when I escape this mortal coil. Not too soon, I hope. Very good. Uh, let's perhaps hope otherwise. And Knight Gardenia, <laughs> would you be so kind? Yes, I am uh, Knight Aster Gardenia. I once served a great kingdom that has since fallen and came here to the modern age after a long period of sleep. 
so that I could start a new life serving myself after so long of serving beep, boop, others. Boop, Except I really enjoy serving others. Beep, so now boop, I am boop, serving beep. my companions here beep, in this beep, class. Beep, beep. Wonderful. Uh, like Knight Gardenia mentioned, of course, anyone who is uh, watching from the, the point of view of any of the students can also hop over into my stream where I have the grading system set up such that you can give your your uh, favorite students as a group uh, higher or lower points on their exam grade using the commands that are uh, available on my channel. Obviously, do not neglect your dear friends, but uh, if you want to give them a little bit of extra points here or there, you can hop over to... Uh, my Twitch channel, that's twitch.tv slash Cosmo Bergamot, and uh, use the commands to raise or lower their grades as you see fit. With that in mind, let us dive right back in. When last we left our intrepid heroes, you had gathered the information from the village at the edge of the forest that some sort of a curse, perhaps, was encroaching on them because a an artifact had been stolen from their temple and were given the information that you needed three clues as to where that artifact would be so that you could go and retrieve it for the village. You found the first one in a horrible blood cult sacrifice room where you thwarted the summoning of a blood god of some sort. And you found the second one in a scientific laboratory long abandoned and still uh, inhabited by a researcher. Very good. You currently find yourselves outside of this great stone dome. We'll just go ahead and Morning. get right back on the dream. <laughs> I suppose we continue onward. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually use the selection. You are here. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a relatively close by dot on your map, or else you must backtrack a little bit to go to the next one. Well, staying close has been serving us well so far. Mm-hmm. So the close one is here or here? That would it would this be one? the smaller one on the same this clump one. of branches that you are. Understood. What do you think, Night Gardenia? Lawler? I agree. Very I good. see no reason not to continue down this path for now. Then who right. will head up the navigation this time? Since we roll the 2d8 no matter who does it, perhaps we should give Lawler a turn this time. Hooray! Hmm. See how lucky. 2d8 for good. navigation. Uh, would you kindly and tell me what the both of them are? Okay. I'm going to use different dice for this one. <laughs> I got a 5 and a 6. Ah, very good. Uh, let me just go ahead and roll some dice on my side. Wonderful. You continue down the same path that you seem to have been following already. It takes another few hours to the point where now you are traveling in relative darkness. But you find that your path starts to slope upwards, where your feet begin to crunch on drier soil, and you walk up further toward the canopy of the forest. The top of the hill breaks just barely through the trees, offering a rare glimpse of an unobstructed sky. Unobstructed, save for the strange sheet-like clouds that float here and there and across. The sun, near the horizon now, dips behind one of these clouds, and the sky is painted with reds and oranges, like the petals of a flower whose seed is the world on which you stand. In this strange twilight, 
you can make out the silhouettes of what might be structures up ahead on top of this cloud-surrounded hilltop. It's beautiful. Is this it's what... absolutely gorgeous. Is this what it looks like in the real world? Mm. In rare lucky moments, sometimes. Perhaps this would be a good time to take a screenshot. I think <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, Lawler looks up towards this majestic sky and vista and proceeds to... What did we say it was? Rubbing, or giving myself a head pat and rubbing my belly, or my tummy? Mm -hmm. I, pat your I pat your head for you, so all you have to do is rub, rub your tummy. You feel me shiver under the under the gentleness of your head <laughs> as I rub my tummy, <laughs> followed by the clicking noise. And uh, now on your mobile phone, uh, Sister Ageha, you've got a photograph of a painted sky. Oh, it's beautiful. We should show the professor when we come back from our exam. We should. We should float to our fellow classmates as well. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm posting this online right now as we speak. Or attempt to, anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that Yeah, the, the, the internet connection that you sort of reach for is a little bit weird right now. You end up accidentally tapping into a magical ley line, and when you post the photo into it, it seems to get washed away off into an infinite flow of magical knowledge somewhere. Oh, well, boy. Well, someone suddenly knows of this. <laughs> Someone is dreaming uh, but, but, right now, and they're just imagining this vista. Uh, this is such a strangely a honest. This is a strangely photographic dream I'm having right now. <laughs> anyway, it's from where painterly. you stand, from where you stand, you can see what might be structures further up ahead. You're not quite sure. It's 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 strange to look at them. So on one hand, structures can provide knowledge and discoveries. On the other hand, we are definitely not going towards a swamp in a house that is deep. So this is definitely not the way to our ultimate destination, but perhaps something could still be gained. So hmm. is if this it... place linear or if we keep pushing through, will we come upon a swamp? Well, the, the hilltop that you were on right now does eventually dip back down into the forest on the other side. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps we simply keep pushing through. Sounds and good to me. It doesn't look like these structures ahead are super far. I mean, it is also getting dark, so somewhere to, to camp and rest for the night might be good. Yes, I was just thinking we could have a lovely dinner. I brought a picnic basket. I hope these structures contain friendly or hospitable environments. You approach one of the, the nearby visions. The structures seem to flicker in and out of your vision, almost as if they were trying desperately to be where you see them but we're not entirely able to match their wishes with reality. Well, that makes me nervous. Now it feels like a fairy trap. Seems kind of sus, to be honest. Can I see? Can I attempt to determine whether these are illusions that we're looking at? Yeah, Lawler, go ahead and make a spirit <gasps> check for me. Threshold I would, 7. I, have I would an idea. like to do that, too. Spirit check... <laughs> I have a wonderful idea oh, if these checks don't work. I got a 4, or 5, and an okay. 8. I got hey, a 10. Hey. hey, not so bad. Um, The two of you sort of, like, get close to the edge of the, the structure where you can sort of see through it sometimes, but, like, maybe one of your eyes sees the wall where the other does not for a moment, and then is, there's sort of, like, a, a fuzziness to it, and you can see partially through it, but now it's there for just a moment. And manifesting your own desires, you reach out 
and both of you simultaneously put a hand on this structure that is solid, and the door swings open. Dun dun dun. Hmm. We have successfully manifested good vibes. <laughs> good vibes. Well, we don't matter. know the vibes yet. <laughs> I I think very strongly about how I would like for my companions to have somewhere safe and comfortable to rest <laughs> and will this the inside of this structure to hold those conditions. Also, Make I probably a... keep touching all the walls while I do so. Make a spirit check at threshold eight for me, please. Wonderful. <laughs> mm. uh, that's another ten. Hey, hey. Dang it, Ray. Uh, you, you feel like you have successfully transmitted your wishes. Whether that has done anything or not, you're not sure. But you feel like you've made a point. Wonderful. Glorious, even. Inside this building, you find shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of small parcels of all shapes, all wrapped in this brown paper with twine tied around it. Long, thin, cylindrical ones sit next to leathery bags of clacking somethings. And in the center of this walkway, a single figure stands, head down. In the low light coming in from the outside, you catch glimpses of reflections glinting off of this figure. With a sudden shudder, its head snaps up, and two lights open up on its face like eyes. Ah, seekers! Come to exchange, perhaps? Or are you here for shopping? Do let us make some deals! And it spreads both of its robotic arms out in front of it. At last, one of my own kind. You see, as it kind of, like, uh, scans across all three of you, it does make eye contact with you, Lawler, for slightly longer than the others. Hopefully, in order to make purchases here, it does not check whether or not we are a robot first. Hmm. Baller, can you identify uh, street signs in images? I shall make an attempt. <laughs> oh, jeez, Lawler, make a wits check for me at threshold nine. All right, then. <laughs> Let's do it. How advanced of an AI am I? A one and a nine. You can fuse one sign for a leaf. The rest <laughs> Amazing. Out. The rest check out. You, you are successfully able to identify 80% of street signs in a, a, a three by three matrix that sort of refills itself a few times. Awesome. <laughs> Incredible. The, the the machine man kind of glides forward, and you can see now that he's actually moving on a track in the floor that goes down the main center walkway and then down each of the shelves as well, as though he's a a stock robot, perhaps. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he kind of glides forward and then does like an awkward robotic bow, standing back up and says, The lot of you look like you could use some rest as well. Surely we can make some deals. Um, yes? Right. I- hello? What's your name? Hi. I am XJ220. XJ220, not XJ9. <laughs> no, unfortunately, my distant cousin and I have not spoken in a very long time. You said XJ220, right? Correct. Fantastic. I'm gonna romance this robot. <laughs> My criteria makes no coming. sense, and it's based on nothing. I knew it was coming sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh so boy, oh boy, what, oh boy. Okay. What kind of what? services do you offer? What is this place? Uh, this is our first time visiting. I can tell you do not have the uh, wristband stamps that say you are a repeating customer. And he opens up a little compartment Ooh. in his chest 
And on the inside, there are three, like, paper strips with a little stamp on them. And he uh, hands one of them to each of you and says, The next time you come in, wrap this around your wrist and you'll be recognized as a repeat customer. Ooh. We Ooh. offer all sorts of things here. If you're looking for supplies for some sort of adventure, surely we've got something for you. If you're looking for pieces of art, we've got a significant collection of NFTs here for you. Boy. If you are looking for... <laughs> You can, uh, somewhere in the distance, the forest cries a little bit. <laughs> and, this is uh, a scammer, we have else. to leave! Non-fudgeable tokens. <laughs> he continues on to detail that, essentially, this is a storehouse that contains at least one of almost everything. Just in existence? SP Charles. I am sure I could check the catalog if you've got something in mind. I mean, hmm. Hmm. You know, do you have your growth hold scepter? <laughs> uh, do give me a moment and I'll take a search. <laughs> and his eyes, like, uh, turn into three little dots in each of the circles. It's like so dot, 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 nothing, dot, 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 nothing. And then he comes back and he says, I did say almost everything. The best that I can do is this, and he jerks, jolts down the the track, and then down another one uh, through one of the the places where there are shelves, and then he jolts back and jets back down onto where you were, and he holds up a like it's a a, a solid brass rod with a like a carving of a fist made of hardwood on the top of it, mm -hmm. and a small like jingly bell on the bottom. Says, yeah. This is the closest thing that we have to that object. What is what is this Thank you object? for checking? It's a jingly fist stick, obviously. <laughs> oh. And he shakes <laughs> a little bit in the jingle bell. I um I need to roll something. I would also <laughs> like to know Do we have it? any currency on us? Would it make sense for you to have any coin with you? Did you bring your allowance to class? Uh... <laughs> I have no I... willpower. I bat at the jingly ball like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't really stop myself. Wonderful. Let's see if my loot gremlin instincts pop up. Oh. Aw. I would like to have money, because... One, I'd like to... Um arrange for safe rest and also i thought of something that'd be really funny to buy oh boy which is a okay one of two items both of which are very fun chainsaw <laughs> flamethrower oh might yeah be expensive probably so uh, for like a beginner adventure salary yeah night gardenia would you kindly roll me 2d10, please. 2d10, will do. <laughs> uh, I got a 10 and a 2. You have 12 gold pieces in your pocket. Cool. I will inquire on the price for safe lodging, and then for my two funny weapons. I'm guessing Lodging for the night to... for each person. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'm guessing I will probably only be able to afford, like, one thing max, but we'll see. We'll find out. Lodging for the night for each person is one coin each. And then, let me check on my inventory. And he zips backwards again down another little hallway, comes back with a, like, a, a cardboard box with a picture of a chainsaw on it from, like, a Home Depot. <laughs> and he zips forward, and he sets that down. And then he zips back again down a different hallway, and then he comes back with a... It's like a, a wooden crate with a police logo on it that says, uh, like, contraband. <laughs> and he sets that down next to it, and he says, For the saw of chains, 61 coins. For the Thrower of Flames, 109 coins. 
I can't believe they just have a Ryobi chainsaw just sitting there in the back. <laughs> All right, so we can at least get safe lodging. That was priority number one. The other two would just be fun. And probably the flamethrower would be a bad idea anyway, because we could easily hurt ourselves, so. We'll set the forest on fire. Yeah, exactly. And then we have to be in the middle of said forest. The chainsaw, however, I mean, it's a scary cursed forest. And also, there's a lot of people in that town trying to stop all that growth. So, so yeah. what about a mundane saw? He zips back and he comes back a moment later. He's got like a one of those like bow shaped saws. It's like a, a, a curve on the top with a, a saw blade going between the two tips of it. And he says, For this strange bow shaped saw, three coins. Okay. I think I'd be I'd grab that plus lodging. Alright, all of that together will cost you six gold pieces. There goes half my money. <laughs> uh, he opens his mouth, and from out in, like, inside of his throat comes a coin slot. <laughs> and you hear him say, Go ahead and put a coin in there. <laughs> this gives all new meaning to putting the money where the mouth is. Oh my god. <laughs> I put my money where his mouth is. You hear it clang down into the inside of his body and land on maybe other coins. And uh, then he, like, the, the thing retracts back into his mouth. His mouth snaps shut with a metallic clang and he says, Oh, wonderful. And then he opens another little compartment on his chest and takes out three little golden keys. And he holds them out in one hand and says, The entrance to the personal quarters that you have rented for the night is just behind you. Behind us? A pleasure the way that we came? As you look back, the door that uh, you came in is not the same door anymore, and in fact opens up into a small, like, semicircular hall room with three doors in it. I hope this isn't the Hotel California. <laughs> what a lovely I, place. I have a question. XJ I have an answer for you. Do you trade freely or do you charge for information on items from your catalog? And he uh sort of like the, the, the eyes go back to the three dots for a moment and he says, Some information is privileged, some information is free. What are you looking for? What if I don't know the name of the item I'm looking for, but I'm... We came across this odd deck of cards earlier, and I was wanting to know more about them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't if you really can put in an, If you can put in an adequate number of search terms into the system, maybe you'll get the one you're looking for. Hmm. I turn Go to ahead and make a... Uh, do you want to look up your, um, the rose, the, the glass flower that we passed up on? Maybe we could learn what it did. I don't know if there's any sense in dwelling on what is no longer available to us, but there is a chance not. we could confront those traitors again. Yes, mm -hmm. they did say next time we meet, should we, it would be as brothers. It's always better to have more information than less. Mm-hmm. All right, I am... Please enter the search to... terms for the item you're looking for. And he kind of, like, leans forward and turns his head, and there's, like, a speaker on his ear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we roll to no good algorithm terms? Go ahead and roll a wits check for me at threshold eight. I'm so glad I gave myself high wits. That is a six. Uh, oh! Am I also rolling for Thank this? you, line at the bottom of the number. One of them if was a If you'd like nine. to, Lawler. Hey, not so bad. Lawler, if you want to, you can go as well. Sure, uh, give me a second. I just got a follower, a new follower. Bakabra, thank you very much for the follow. Hey. 
congratulations. Welcome to Lowell's time. We are playing a nice TTRPG here with my friends, Professor Cosmo Bergamo, uh, Knight Ast the <laughs> Knight Aster Gardenia, and also the cleric Agaha Vercor. Just gonna roll here for a wits what? roll to see if we could put in good search terms. I got an eight and a one. Okay, eight is good enough for it. Uh, Night Gardenia and Lulz, together you manage to manipulate the search terms that you're looking through to accurately describe. Are you looking for the glass rose? I guess so. Are you asking me? Or... All right. I fail. So. Well, the two of you are working together. Oh, then I suppose I am. Very good. Uh, the eyeballs start doing like a, 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 like the Apple loading screen sort of thing as it's looking through <laughs> the, uh, the search terms that you've given it. And finally the eyes snap back up and he says, we haven't got that one here, but, and then he opens his mouth again and out of his, uh, out of his mouth, like a ticker tape sort of comes out and it says on it, uh, Deck of Baleful Summoning, 300 coins. Wait, for the rose? Oh, I, I, I looked at the wrong cell on my <laughs> on my sheet there. Oops. <laughs> well, you got some free, free information item there. Free name! <laughs> rip, rip. It was in the, um, he just related terms, bit. like, people who bought people this, who bought also, this also bought <laughs> It's just a oh, tiny it's a image, and it says deck of recommended to get fifty percent off if you buy as a package deal. This robot was just is just an employee of Amazon. Yeah, very good. Um, no, it the the ticker tape comes out and it says uh, the fool's rose six hundred and four uh, coins. Dang. Dang. The fool's rose. Do you have also any more all mean names? Do you have any more information Sorry. on this item, XJ220? Unfortunately, since it's not in <coughs> our warehouse right now, I cannot access any more of the information about it, except for its previous selling price. Well, thank you anyway. That is very helpful. Absolutely. Is there anything else I can do for you before you go to retire for the night? Hmm... I feel like if I had time to think, I would think of something, but I'm coming up empty right now. We can sleep on it. Do you the... sell Go information? Ahead. Again, the information might be privileged. Ask the information that you'd like, and I'll tell you if there is a price. Fantastic. Do you have, or could you produce... A map of this area. And he, uh, like, his head turns very slightly to one side and then turns back again and says, Unfortunately, it would only be valid for four minutes or so before it becomes, un before it becomes invalid again. Interesting. There are some set points in the forest, but... The points between them tend to shift and change. We, for instance, are a set point in the forest. Hmm. That is useful Thank information you. on its own. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Do I owe you anything for that? No, that was a simple database recall. You're so funny. How tall are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was that, uh, was that a comment in your chat? centimeters. <laughs> oh. Turns around. Oh, okay, a... time to go to bed. <laughs> you're just a little <laughs> bit shorter than me. 149 centimeters. If you'd like, I can be taller and like a little hydraulic on the bottom of where he is like, oh my att God. Is, uh, attached to the track, like extends up 10 centimeters. This robot has the best customer service. You're doing our species proud. Are we allowed to tip you? 
he he kind of like cocks his head a little bit and then like opens his mouth and the coin thing like just starts to like sort of peek out and he's like is this what you mean <laughs> i would take out one gold coin i assume i have one gold and i would like to give him a gold you hear it go tink 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 whoosh, down into the coins in his stomach up i guess and he he like pulls the the coin thing back into his into his throat and he goes to be very honest i don't know how to deal with tips you currently have a positive balance in our system glorious well, you have a positive balance in my heart xj420 <laughs> make a spirit check at <laughs> threshold <laughs> 8 for me it's working <laughs> you're seducing you know the no. shopkeeper <laughs> Make it at threshold seven because you did just you did just open an account with him. <laughs> wow. Can that I is... teach a robot That's a three, a five, <laughs> and an eight. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Um, oh, this there is, is great. a moment. <laughs> There's a, a moment of uh, sort of processing before he prints another ticker tape out, snaps it, like, like snaps his mouth shut to cut it, and then hands it to you, and it just says, uh, recommended services, and then as the camera goes to look over your shoulder at it, it's uh, censored out with black bars. <laughs> So me and Dollar know not to disturb Ageha in her room tonight. <laughs> this, is, this is more than I could have hoped for. I say in, in character. I say in character. Brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> XJ two twenty reaches out a fist to fist bump you. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, am dying. going to um. Thank you, XJ220, for the information. You are very sweet, and I will lean up and I will give him a little kiss on the cheek. I'd say that you nailed it, but it sounds more like something's being nailed. <laughs> Baka bra, thank you for the follow. I'm glad you are enjoying the excellent content. And other Baka, thank you for sure for coming to today's stream. How are you today? And yes, I am doing a collab yeah. with my friends uh, Professor Cosmo Bergamo, the lovely knight Astor Gardenia, and also the lovely and lucky, I should say, cleric Aga Hover. <laughs> <laughs> cleric of Eros, baby! Oh, goodness. At the very beginning of tonight's session, Ageha threatened to romance at least one monster. He is not a so monster. So here we go. He's a good boy. <laughs> that means that the... <laughs> The monster threat still stands. The monster threat still oh, stands. Dear. Oh boy. Um, the scene fades to black as the three of you <laughs> retreat to your rooms. Retreat. <laughs> the next morning, as the sun rises again in the sky, uh, Night Gardenia and Lawler. Uh, you can go ahead and restore up to or you restore one d six vigor if you have lost any. Nope. Uh, nope. Um, I've... Ageha, would you kindly make me a body check? Oh my god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> At threshold six. You're really making assumptions about me and this robot, but okay. <laughs> that is a two and an eight. Very good. Um, the deep tissue massage services <laughs> that you were offered by the robot who had, like, uh, separate attachments at the end of his arms to do, like, hot stone massage uh, seems to have worked exceptionally well on you. You also can uh, <laughs> regain up to six of your vigor. Dang. That is as much vigor as I had. Very nice. Fantastic. Bakabra um, says yeah. metal clanging noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Does my make good on my it, threats? It is the most relaxing deep tissue massage you have ever received. Your shoulders are the most limber they have ever been. 
Wow, I feel like I had stones for shoulders before this. Now I feel like Jello, but like in a good way. <laughs> um, the the next taking morning, one of the professor's exams. Yeah, having having good robot massage. Um, the next morning, as you all three come out of the the uh, rooms that had secured for you, the door that would have led back into the storehouse instead leads to outside. And you find yourself standing again on this, uh, this hilltop where the sun is just barely rising, painting the sky in different shades of orange and pink. Ooh, it's a new mm. variation. We should get another screenshot. Yes. <laughs> I am already patting Lawler's head. Oh, um, I, I rub my <laughs> tummy and... And yet another photograph has been taken of this planet. <laughs> Listen, I just really enjoy being able to look back on a lovely sunset, so. I do not disagree. Normally you would need an entire painter to to make this this scene, but uh, luckily we have technology. I'm 40% technology. Mom. Tink, tink. <laughs> Pokemon voice technology is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Wasn't geez. this supposed um, to be a horror so RPG? And easy to wear. <laughs> um, it's not horror. It's just kind of like dark toned. Um, is it? But, is it? I feel like we're playing the PG thirteen version of Trophy Dark. Not gonna lie. No. <laughs> So, Playing the oh, darkest goodness. dungeon if we had more control of comic relief creation. For a kid's For version. Real. Kid's version of darkest dungeon. So, we have passed a night. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you have uh, spent a night in the forest in literally the only safe place that was on the list of places you could have gone. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah. A little peek behind the curtain there. Mm -hmm. Good job. Make sure to subtract uh, one yes. supply. Yes, everyone. Uh, for our future I leave a five-star Yelp review. <laughs> ten, ten. We come uh, again. Yeah, but go ahead and uh, do not forget to subtract one, uh, one supply from your inventory. There. Uh, we go. Very good. Um, this was one of the places that was marked on your map. Um, but all of the structures that were there in the twilight last night do not seem to be there now. Hmm. I suppose maybe we the... should have materialized a clue. Um, but that was a lovely rest, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was. And now we can do more without worrying about the danger that lurks in, in the cover of night. I feel filled with determination. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Onward. And upward. <clears throat> Actually, I think you... we're going downward again. Probably. At this point, yes. Uh, you continue onward over the hill, and it takes you down into the canopy of the forest again, who is uh, helming the the navigation for this one and feels the luckiest. <laughs> well, if it's the luckiest, we should probably give it to Ageha, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you sure I didn't just use up all of my luck? <laughs> you know what? Or I could Let's go, it. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Let's go. All right, 2d8 for me, please. 2d8. I will use the sparkly pink one and the ice blue one. <laughs> that is a four and a three. Ooh, very close to almost getting doubles there. Uh, let's see. You had gone... We went... Up here. There we go. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, So there is a deep valley between you and the closest one uh you feel like even though it it seems pretty <laughs> close on the map here uh it might actually take you quite a lot more time to get there because of this deep dark valley or you can continue onwards either to the closer one or to one that's slightly further off hmm hmm 
I mean, there is one more There's... along our path, but then it's a significant amount of backtracking to get to more points of interest. Here's my concern. If we go this way, we are passing one of the birds. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The birds are bad, I hear. They are monsters, I hear. Monstrous, even. So maybe we we go, we pass the the dome which we have completely forgotten about, and start up that other path. Well, only one of us agreed to forget about it. <laughs> That's true. I still remember the dome just fine. I mean, we can go up to this one. Because that, that has a valley between it and the bird. Yeah. I mean, birds can fly, but still, it's, you know, metaphors don't always hold up completely. <laughs> I'm just saying we probably don't want to go for the, for the bird one. Yeah. If we can help it. All right. Just be a we really, a, once we hit that one up there, going back is will take forever but we'd pass through two safe places on the way because the eye dome had those nice traders and then just a guy who wanted us to leave but did not cause us any harm so mm -hmm. uh it might in terms of having to backtrack it's it's not a terrible path to take so sure let's go up there all right awesome. It is almost noon by the time you get close to this this dot on the map. And it takes you down sort of in a slightly darker area of the forest where the, the path kind of becomes more narrow and you can feel the, the air around you is cooler. And... The sound of trickling water nearby attracts your attention. You find in the thick canopy a small, oddly serene and crystal clear lake in a clearing flanked with what appeared to be thousands of small, smooth stones laid in intricate patterns on the shores. And the patterns lead your eyes to the tiny mouth of a cave from which the trickling water emits and which is decorated with strings of bright, shining stones on strings. The small stream that trickles out of the cave follows upwards into the dimness for a moment, and you can't see anything further in the cave. If you did not see the reflection of the little bits of dappled sky in the surface of the water, you might not have seen the water at all. It is that crystal clear. Dang. Is water normally this clean? When you said uh, beautiful water and then lots and lots of shiny and my brain said swords? Strange women in <laughs> ponds handing out swords? Lots of swords? <laughs> it is no basis for a system of government. But no, uh, <laughs> thousands and thousands of tiny uh, shiny stones laid in intricate mm. patterns along the shoreline. That sounds Shiny like something we don't stones. want to disturb. Okay, you say don't want to disturb. My first thought was, ooh, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Do the, are the patterns recognizable in any way? Does this look like some magical ritual of some kind? Or is it just Why don't you art? make a spirit check for me? Spirit check D at uh, threshold six, please. I would love to. I'm so good at spirit. That you is see. a 10, a 4, and a 2. You can say that you're full of spirit. Not so bad. <laughs> but I'm just... You look at these patterns, and while you are not aware of any specific ritual or spell that uses this sort of pattern, you recognize something of religious significance when you see it. This is the equivalent of, like, the, the patterns raked into the sand at a Zen garden. Hmm. Hmm. Standing on the edge of the water, with 
one foot perhaps in the 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 water and the other foot up on the land you see a strange lanky looking figure a maybe two meters tall very similar to the gentleman that you met yesterday mechanical looking mannequin maybe doll it is standing with its back to you looking at the entrance to the cave with one foot in the water naturally Lawler's face lights up very good should that should that man have a foot in the water is that not dangerous maybe that's why there's only one foot <laughs> Maybe he wants to go, but is scared of rust and electrocution. Maybe we could help him figure out what's inside. Or them. It? Not sure of correct pronouns of mechanical person. We generally do not have any unified gender. That's part of the reason why we accept most uh, pronouns. Well, I would like to approach carefully. Um, he hello? Greetings. You come up pretty close, and in still between you and him, there are the the shining stones laid down on the the shoreline in these patterns. And he is at the edge of the water, so it's water and him, the stones, and then you. So you are at let's say close range. As you call out, the head snaps over to you. And instantly, out of the, the center of the chest, a bolt of fire rips ah! toward you. Uh, I'm ducking, I'm ducking! Gonna, can I attempt He's to pull go ahead Agaha and... out of the way? You did not go with uh, Sister oh, Agaha. No. So uh, we're going to be rolling against your wit's defense. Wit's defense uh, with... is a seven. Ooh -hoo. No, that's five. Uh, the... I was looking at spirit. It's five. Oh, that's worse then. Uh, then the <laughs> bolt of fire uh, screams towards you through the air, leaving a black acrid smoke behind it, and strikes you directly below the left shoulder, causing you to spin a little bit backwards. And you will take... <laughs> what? Five fire damage. Are you uh, kidding? Oh. I have Let's bigger. roll some initiative. Uh, who was the one who was who was uh, heading it up? I think it was you, Sister Agaha, right? Yeah. Oh no! Go yeah. ahead and roll wits for me, please. Rip. All right. Uh, your That's threshold is five. All right, your party gets to move first. So, so uh, here's what just happened. Ageha came up and uh, said a thing, and then the robot shot fire at her. She is now whimpering on the ground in pain. Like, massive pain. Oh, that's right, you only have six health and that was four! Yeah. Uh, no, I have eight total health. She has eight health and took five damage, so yep. she's kind of in danger. You can probably guess what I'm going to do next. I mean, it seems like a good idea. Um, okay, so Lawler is kind of sh is kind of shocked to see one of their own brethren just immediately sets um the other set Agha on fire. <laughs> but once they break out of said shock, they immediately run over to Agha and attempt to put out the flames. Um, in the process saying a prayer to their gods, the Omnissiah. The Omnissi I'm going to be attempting to use glory to the machine spirit, which is my healing spell. Very good. Uh, Ageha, what is your current vigor? Three. All right. Uh, Lawler, would you kindly roll your spirit against the target of three? Okay. Um, so spirit is three dice. Yeah, your threshold three. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of them fell on the ground, but it fell as a three, and the others were six and six. 
Very good. You succeed at your healing. Go ahead and roll a d4. Cool. Let's use a d4 now. And... Oh, it's just one. All right. So, uh, oh, Akeha, you health. restore... Yeah, you restore one health, and uh, Lawler, it costs you two vigor to cast this spell. Rip. Um. So. Uh, but the fire is out now. I gasp in pain. I gasp in pain as I use a bunch of my energy, presumably to summon the machine to beseech the machine spirit. But it seems to have helped out. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's better than nothing. It's better than doing that and having nothing happen. That is true. That is true. Very true. <laughs> so, uh, that will leave Sister Ageha and Night Gardenia. Um, I would like to move so that I am within arm's reach of Ageha, so that if she gets hit by any more fire, I can reduce the damage with my ability. And then okay, I'm going easy. to take out my bow and arrow and shoot this mean, mean robot for hurting my friend. All right, go ahead and uh, make a an attack with your uh, with your bow. It's going to be threshold eight. I got it. I got it twice. Oh, very nice. Um, you fire the arrow off of your bow. Go ahead and do your damage. But as soon as the arrow leaves your the string, you think, oh, I'm shooting against something that's made of metal. This might not actually work. And then you see it jam into, like, a, a mechanism at the bottom of its neck that, like, allows it to turn its head back and forth. <laughs> What's your damage? Um, max damage. That's a four. Oh, ho, not so bad. You have disabled its ability to turn its head back and forth. Uh, that's nice. gonna probably cause some lasting damage. Good. Sister Ageha? Mr. Well, I Ageha. Didn't... Sister. Oh, sister Aga. <laughs> well, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I want to smash it. I'm mad now. <laughs> uh, how close was I to the thing? You are in close range. Fantastic. So I just need to take another step to get in touch and range, huh? Yes. Though you will have to walk over the stones to do it. Oh, hmm. Can I do that without disturbing the stones? You tell me. Make a body check for me, please. Uh, let's say right. threshold six. All right. That is a six and an eight. Yeah, okay. Um, you sort of, like, having stood back up, you you look up at this robot, and you're like, okay, this is the game that we are playing. And you, <laughs> like, deftly step just between each of the stones with your hammer in your hand. Go ahead and make your attack. Fantastic. Uh, this one's going to be at threshold six. Can Fantastic. I attempt to follow her or just move close enough that she gets my... Damage you boost. do have you have movement left. Each each round uh, you have movement and action. And I, mean, I moved up uh, Night to Gardenia before, moved to get to you. Oh, so yeah, uh, gotcha. you won't be able to follow this round. Okay. No min maxing for me. <laughs> All right. That is an eight and a two. Yeah, that'll do it. Go ahead and do your damage. Fantastic. What happened to my D6? Where did it go? What did I do with it? Like a D6. I don't know where like it's gone, D6. so I'm just going to roll it in... D6. Two! Hey, hey, two is not so bad. Mm -hmm. You... Oh. Both hands sideways swing your big hammer, and it gives the machine a love tap. Uh, right down, like, in the center of its torso area, and you can see some of the components are dented inwards now. Derp. Good. It, it brings it. both of its arms together in front of it, slams its fists together, and a sort of shock wave emits from it. Uh-oh. Uh Oh, no. Sister Ageha, would you kindly make a body check for me at threshold eight, please? Fantastic. I'm relatively good at body. That is two tens. 
Awesome. Uh -huh, oh, very nice. The shockwave impacts your body and you are flung backwards back over the stones and manage to land sliding backwards on your feet with your hammer still in your hand. But you uh, braced against it such that you took no damage from it. I was gonna say, if not... I'm looking if like Nora Valkyrie from Ruby the right stone, now. She'd be, be back next to me and I would yes. get her. Yep. <laughs> yeah, put like right back where where she was a moment ago, right in your I like arm's help reach. Catch and steady you. And I don't the... need any help being steadied, but thank you, dear. <laughs> the the robot sort of like leans forward in an almost spider-like position and jolts dash forward, just about as quick as XJ220 was on his rails, uh, and is now up in your face. Oh no. Rude. This will bring it back to your three's turn. Uh, who is the... Ageha's face is also in my face, which means I can hit him with sword. Him Correct. With sword. With yeah, sword. uh, it, it is within arm's reach for all of you. For all of us? Oh boy. Yes. Whale on it. Wailing on the last thing we did? That worked great, so I'm up to just wail. <laughs> what a whale so, of a tail. Sometimes there is a puzzle, and sometimes there is just beat the snot out of it. I rolled a nine. Ho, ho. <laughs> uh, and you're using your short sword for it? Yep. Yeah, very good. Uh, knowing what you know about how you have damaged it before, rather than just trying to, like, bash this thing with your sword, you put the, the, the point of the sword up against, like, where two plates of metal are, jam it up inside, and then pry upwards, and you can hear the grinding of some gears inside. Do your damage. I swear I'm not faking my rolls! Uh, I just rolled max damage again. That's a six. Awesome. Impressive. You're just running yeah, um, out your luck. <laughs> you have well, uh, wrenched God open. Hurt, so now they face my nightly wrath. Oh, we're friends. Yeah, that tracks. Of course. Yeah. Okay, well, that, oh. that was cute. I like that. <laughs> um, You have wrenched open a portion of the armored outside. Very good. Lawler and uh, Sister Ageha? I smack it with my hammer. <laughs> Make it happen. Just don't forget the hammer. D4. Threshold right. six. Uh, is that to hit or is that damage? That's damage. Threshold That's six. Damage, yeah, yeah her, her extra is for damage. Fantastic. And that is a five and a seven. Hey, so very nice. Do so that, that damage a... with an extra D4. Before. That is six, seven, eight damage. Ho oh, ho, oh boy. Gosh. You do like a big overhead swing and just bring it down on the side of this thing's head. And it was already like disabled from turning its head. So it has to like turn its whole body like old Batman style to look at you. Uh, but the head just completely tears off. And clanks onto the stones and, like, falls partially into the water. Did you just decapitate Fantastic. it? The body seems to be still standing, though. Uh, just to add insult to injury, can I just, like, kickball kick that head into the water? <laughs> Thunk. And it sinks down into the crystal clear pool. Uh, the only way that you'd tell is the ripples that are coming off of where it's sunk in. No pollution, but also haha, -ha, take that. But also <laughs> haha, -ha, take that. Right, Lala, what you got? Can deal with it. Um, <laughs> I pull out my holy hand cannon and point it at the now headless body of my once brethren. And I say something. Right. I see something pithy, like uh, see something along the lines of. May the Omnissiah have mercy upon you, because I will not. And <laughs> I'm going to roll to shoot the... Uh, this will be at threshold eight, please. Okay. Threshold eight. Oh, uh, I miss. I got a six and a one. Uh, almost as though it 
knew this was coming, you pull the gun out and point it at it, and as you're saying your pithy comment, you pull the trigger and its hand comes up and just barely bats the gun out of the way, like gun foo style. <laughs> Seriously? Yep. Well, that's and rude. Its other hand reaches down to its hip, grabs nothing, and it brings its hand back up, and as it's bringing its hand back up, the hand is reconfiguring itself mechanically into something like a gun, which it points directly at you, Lawler. Oh, I'm uh, Messiah. He's gonna, be rolling, he's gonna be rolling against your wit's defense. Okay, my wit's defense uh, is six. Oh yeah, he's definitely gonna he's definitely gonna put a bullet in you. Um, <laughs> the there's like a, a motion of a trigger being pulled, another explosive uh, explosive gunpowdery sound, and Lawler, what does it feel like to get shot? Uh, like no other pain I have ever experienced. For the fact that I literally have never experienced pain before. <laughs> I think it feels yep. like, um, 1d4 less damage, though. Oh, so clever as that. Uh, move to push Lawler out of the way. Hey, not so bad. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead and, uh, spend your two vigor for that and roll a d4 to reduce this damage. Because the damage I... is sitting at six. Yeah, I just reduced it by three. Nice! That will keep someone alive. <laughs> um, Yay! Yeah. Not dying! Lawler, well, much... you... How much uh, Lawler had six... Still done? I had six health three. left. So you're st you still are taking three damage with uh, Night Gardenia's interference. Correct. Can I absorb three of that damage? In, Why, in my yes, locket? you can. The bullet enters your body, and for like half of a millisecond, you think, oh no, this hurts so much, but that data is instantly, like, control Z removed from you, and instead, the locket in uh, on your chest, Night Guardian, or rather, uh, Sister Ageha, glows bright red for a second, gets really hot, and then cools right back down. It currently has three damage in it. Uh, uh, not to, um, you know, negate that you just went to... Uh, yes. <laughs> and so the power of friendship saved Lawler. Uh, literally, yes. Lawler will remember that. <laughs> pretty... Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, and then seeing that whatever had just... Well, I guess not seeing, but rather perceiving that whatever it had just tried to do did not work, it leaps backwards off of its weird springy legs and lands back at the edge of the water again. It is now in close range. It's back to you three. Fantastic. I am going to close that distance again. And I am going to ready my hammer and see if uh, Night Gardenia joins me for that sweet, yeah. sweet extra damage. I will, because we love sweet, sweet extra damage. Delicious. <laughs> nice. Fantastic. We'll join so my companion in the charge. So we've both uh, both in range. We're going to get that bonus. I am going to take my hammer. I'm going to hold it low and then swing back just a little bit like I'm lining up a golf shot. And then <laughs> ping, right for the right for the robot nuts. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah, make your attack. It's at threshold six. Ooh, four and four. I whiff oh, it. Oh, no. I whiff it. Bad times on that one. What about you, Gardenia? Uh, I will do another swipe with my sword since I'm up here. All right, go ahead and make it happen. That was a nine. Threshold six. Hey, hey, very nice. Um... So there's, like, open bits of this thing's mechanisms now. Uh, there's the one that you wrenched open, there's the entire neck. So you just kind of, like, flip the sword around and plunge it directly into the open neck hole and, like, jiggle it around a little bit and you can hear a bunch of, like, grinding noises. Nasty. And it takes you a second to wrench the sword back out because it kind Where of had gotten sword? stuck. 
with my sword, okay? Yeah. Oh, your sword's fine. Your sword is made of, like, a, a pretty strong metal. This thing is made of brass. Okay, good, good, good. Does the damage nice. I deal matter, or is it just super dead? Uh, it's not dead yet. Go ahead and give me your damage, please. Oh my god, this... Five. Oh, oh boy. Uh, it's not dead, but uh, you are not sure what metric you would use for whether a robot functions or not, but you'd think that you're getting pretty close to a threshold here. <laughs> Lawler, what's up? Um, I'm actually pretty shaken by what just happened um, to the point where even though the even though the data from the pain of getting shots was quote unquote uh, control Z, it still kind of left an impression on me to the point where yeah, I'm it's like still in your undo list. It's pretty much like <laughs> the recycle bin. I'm like, and I'm just like not in a joking mood this point i dropped the gun on my gun on the ground take out the the holy letter opener and just run up to stab the sh the uh the stuff out of this robot good catch good catch good catch, good catch. i'm gonna roll a little... go ahead and uh make your attack it's at threshold six and i gotta roll the three and a two my rolls are great today <laughs> so sad uh, unfortunate uh yeah a little little sort of like pokey dagger you were not sure what the best way to have attacked this thing would have been so you just kind of like jab at it and it kind of is deflected by some of the some of the metal me going oh be careful your fingers gears in there <laughs> uh, <laughs> remember it you're made reaches... of flesh now you're right you don't forget, you have blood. Uh, it reaches out with both hands, the the gun hand reconfiguring into like a claw, and tries to grab both of your shoulders, Night Gardenia. It's coming in against your body defense. Oh no, my body defense is actually garbage. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, he rolled a nine. Oh. He grabs you by both of your shoulders and then like lunges backward at the waist and straight like. German suplexes you <gasps> and burst into the water behind him. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Holy crap! Uh, you'll take five points of vigor. That is a, a lot of vigor. Okay. And uh, the wind is knocked out of you. You are currently starting to drown. No! Oh, no! <laughs> That's not ideal! This will bring it back to, this will bring it back to all of you guys. Um, Night Gardenia, you cannot move out of this thing's grasp until you somehow break this grapple. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll roll to try to do that. <laughs> Go ahead and make an opposed body check against this thing's threshold of nine. Uh, yeah, five. Nope, I'm still drowning. All right, you are uh, currently being held upside down, headfirst in the water, uh, with probably a concussion. I am going to yell for Lawler to, uh, grab, grab her, grab her, I'll deal with it. <laughs> and, uh, I am going to swing again at this thing to try and get it, uh, to release, uh, my, my new knight friend. Because we're friends Give it now. a shot. And I'm not going to let this stand. <laughs> uh, seeing yeah, that, that's, that's, sorry, you first. It was like that is a that is a true thing. Uh, do not forget that you have divine guidance that you could use. Yeah, I absolutely am going to do that. Uh, I will give one vigor, dropping me down to three, to use uh, spirit instead of body to, uh, or use to spirit smash with the of, hammer to smash with the hammer. Yeah, power wah, friendship. Wah, wah, wah. That is an 8, a 2, and a 9. Very nice. Go ahead and do that damage. Fantastic. And I'm still going to get the uh, 1d4, right? Yes, because technically a... you are still in arm's, rank, uh, arm's <laughs> length despite the drowning. Despite the <laughs> drowning. It's a passive. It's an aura. So It's right. because I, I groan. No damage, no whammies, no whammies. 8! so much. Oh, oh boy. You 
bring the hammer back again, both arms just like muscle bursting. You can feel that that multi-class of barbarian start to flow <laughs> back into your brain there. And you drive the head of the hammer into where like the hips connect with the, the torso, and it rips the whole bottom part of the the robot completely off the top. Uh, it I would like to rage. Let's go. <laughs> right. Uh, it lets go of its grasp. Night Gardenia, you are still underwater, but you are no longer being grappled. Uh, and it uh, sparks a few times, and both pieces fall into the water, making little ripples. Is it dead? Are we out of initiative now? You think that it's probably. It's probably been finished. I'm gonna drop the hammer and immediately dive for Gardenia and pull her out of the water. I mean, I guess you'd be grabbing both of us out now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yep. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <coughs> Lulz is going to... I... Lulz is going to crawl to the other side of, of maybe like five feet away from the other two and just sort of huddle up. In like a prone, in a, um, in a, not prone position, but field position. Oh. Mm -hmm. And no one had dinner that night. <laughs> also, they're going to use yes. um, their healing spell on Night Gardenia again. Very that nice. Go ahead nice. and, yeah, spend that vigor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Night Gardenia, what's your current vigor? My current vigor is five. All right, so you're rolling at threshold five there, Lawler. Uh, a ten and a six. Yeah, you're nice. you're totally good. Go ahead and roll a d4 to restore. Mm -hmm. Lulz po or Poke pops their hands out from their fetal position, points it towards Night Gardenia, and whispers, "The machine spirit is willing." And rolls a three. Hey, that's not bad. Um, Night Gardenia, you feel the intense headache and the, like, wetness in your ears recede a little bit. You think that the concussion that you definitely had just got healed. Uh, yes, I... Cough up some more water. Put a, a hand on Ageha's shoulder to help console her that I'm I'm fine. I'm all right. I look at my my other friend who is seemingly very distressed, and I crawl over to him and give him some head pets. I am going to crawl <laughs> over with Gardenia and join this little huddle. Oh. I throw my arms around both of my friends. I was so worried. I was so worried. <laughs> this is like Goblin Slayer, except the party survived. <laughs> yeah, I turned my head right. and I spit out a little blood. <laughs> yeah, I this think... was a rough fight for you three. Um, it, it looked like it was going pretty poorly for a moment, but you all three pulled through. I think it now would be a... It would be best if we had a little snacko. I think so, too. I think so, too. We are all very are, like, sad, and we need stale snack by now. time. Stale garlic bread is still garlic bread. You guys it's can take a rest bread. here if you'd like. Uh, it'll take maybe six-ish hours or so for you to be able to recover all of your your vigor that you would get back with the dye and all of that if you'd like. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Um, so when we do eventually make camp and rest, uh, Lawler digs through their pack they don't since this is their first time as a humanish person they don't fully understand food ignore the fact that i post food on my twitter all the time um and they pull <laughs> out was basically a giant jug of beer wonderful which they are going to share with their companions obviously <laughs> hey very good uh, uh you you sort of set up camp, uh, as it were, the, the daytime picnic camp at the edge of the stones, uh, underneath I'm... some of the, the canopy. 
I am still curious. Now I'm assuming that was a guard robot and that, like, this water was coming out of, like, a tunnel? And I was imagining... Yeah, there's a little, a little cave up there. A tunnel behind a waterfall. We love tunnels behind waterfalls. It's the best part of every video game. That's true. <laughs> so, on one hand, that last experience was absolutely terrible. On the other hand, we did go through all that trouble. So, hopefully there isn't a second equivalent robot in there. And maybe there is something nice in there to help comfort us after our harrowing uh, encounter. So, I kind of want to look in there. All right. Well, uh, first, go ahead. To it? Is that why it attacked? <laughs> Um, speaking of which, how do we roll for our vigor? What do we uh, roll for that? You'll, you'll use up one of your supplies and then roll a d6 and recover that much vigor. Oh, okay. So use up supplies and roll a d6. d6. Should probably do that before I venture into the cave. Three. I would yeah, not probably. Like to die. Let's Dying see. is bad. Should I use the white die or the black die for this? Black. Black, black, black die black, it black. is. I regain two health. Oh, send hey, that nice. guy to die jail. <laughs> <laughs> I regained three health, and now I'm at eleven. I regained three as well. Now I'm at six. Hey, better numbers than you were a moment ago. That's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, you spend the better part of the afternoon, like recovering, bandaging yourselves up. Uh, in eating food, sharing the sharing each other's company, and just kind of generally recovering, before Night Gardenia, the the curiosity starts getting to you. There's got to be something over there. Why does hurting hurt so much? <laughs> well, you see, the edges of your skin are made out of little nerve endings, and. I'm just going to pass the time giving Lawler a little anatomy lesson <laughs> about why Very pain good. is painful. Helping <sighs> rationalize this, this harrowing experience. But that's also why like, soft it. things feel soft, and it feels nice to hold hands. Would you feel better if you held my hand? Yes, please. Okay. Adorable. I love it. Uh, Night Gardenia, you... Poke around the edge of the cave where the water seems to be coming out, and you do see that there there does appear to be a hollow behind this water uh, that leads deeper into something underground. Underground. Okay, I go back over to my friends and I say, Ageha, could you make one of my arrows glow again? Okay. And I do. This is, yeah, this is an easy thing. Now that you've done it once in this world, it's easy to tap the arrow and it uh, emits light. Mm -hmm. Cool. I have a glowy arrow now. I go back over to the cave and I'm going to shoot the arrow down the hollow to see, one, if anything turns around and lights it on fire. Two, <laughs> just to get a better idea of what's down here. You fire the arrow deeper down, and you see the... It sort of illuminates what's behind it. The small stream that cr that trickles out of the cave follows uh, sort of like back further into the dimness for a moment, which widens thereafter into this uh, sort of wide grotto. And you sort of like poke your head in and see it seems to be lit by colorful glowing red and blue crystals that twinkle from their embedded places in the natural stone walls around it. And then looking down at the surface of the water from which the uh, the trickle is coming, the water reflects the colorful lights in scintillating patterns onto the ceiling. And you can see that there is an island in the center of this pool, a path to which is made up by several uh, several similar the shining stones that have been placed in the water to make stepping stones. And this island reaches upwards to the top of this cave, uh, connecting like a stalactite. 
and all around the sounds of droplets of water falling from the the irregular ceiling into the pool create an almost soothing hypnotic effect. If it turns up, this thing heals, I swear. <laughs> um, oh. So that all sounds very pretty. But I did not hear of any objects of interest, and so it, I would have to venture further in to, to know if there's anything of value to be obtained here. Oh, it's so pretty. Whoa. Um, maybe, <gasps> you know what, I'll go back to my friends and I'll say, hey, we, we all had a rough time back there. I found something else pretty we can take a screenshot of. <laughs> What's a screenshot? Okay. It's when you pat your head and rub your tummy. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it had a name. <laughs> Amazing. Now that's a clippable moment. Whew. Boy, oh boy. Oh, goodness. Um. Yeah, no, so do the... All right. The three of you venture inside and uh, find that the lights reflecting off of the the water the watery pool the pool is actually pretty shallow maybe only comes up to about mid shin uh, but the lights from the crystals are scintillating and almost hypnotic and very soothing especially with the ASMR of the water droplets falling down into the pool as well. And the path of the stepping stones leads to that central island. Is this what they call autosensory meridian response? I don't speak infernal. Um, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it safe to go for it? Looks serene here, but it also looked serene outside, and things did not go so well. I I feel like it shouldn't be of any harm, but I did not want to venture further without the two of you. I know that you would not want something to happen to me because I wandered carelessly into something, and I cannot help you if I if something befalls me without you to help me. I would learn true resurrection just to kill you again, yes. What? <laughs> if you did that to me, I would bring uh, you back just to kill you again. So don't do that. <laughs> Even in death, okay. you shall still serve. Oh, yikes. That's an ominous sentence. <laughs> That's <laughs> very, very ominous weird sentence. in here. I guess I'm going to go up these steps because they look like it does intend for you to step on them, and also because things are getting weird over here. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you follow these stepping stones, uh, slightly wet and slick from the, the uh -huh. ambient humidity, but when you reach the island on the in the center you see that there is a bright glowing red and blue coming from a small recess on the inside and there is a perfectly circular pool of water about a meter in diameter or so hewn into the black stone that is the the center of this island and sitting at the edge of it, one hand on either side, looking down into the pool, eyes only inches away from the water, there is a a woman clad in vague, vaguely colored wraps from head all the way down to toe, a red scarf, blue uh, bandages wrapped around a leg, all kinds of different sort of faded old colors. And it's, uh, she seems to be just like really regarding the, the water. And as you step in, she opens her mouth and begins to speak. Lament, rejoice, 
The paths all folk walk twist on themselves. Smoke in a bottle, a snail retracing its own trail, a rope tied to itself. I see where all threads converge, where the knot is thickest and most tightly wound. I follow each thread, vibrating, oscillating, writhing until it terminates into you, 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 dragged along a kitchen table littered with salt and spoons, the resonant harmonic of a man's mind separated into component notes, like a harp made from fingers and toes. I start slowly backing up. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out is, it's freaky. This is our third cue, clue. It's either creepy or our third clue. I don't know. It sounds like she's into some really questionable junk. I pull out my hand cannon, <laughs> but I do not aim it at any person. The the woman kind of like arches her back and then like sits back up on her haunches. Her hands kind of resting on her on her knees, and she says, I prophesy what none have heard, but all will listen. Speak your questions, and I will see. You know, when the Elder warned us about falling prey to the wiles of spirits in the forest. You know, I feel like we should just leave. I feel like this isn't what we're looking for. I, I think we should just leave. Hmm. I am so curious if this is our way to clue number three, though. I mean, we're not being offered to trade something in exchange for this. Which is kind of suspicious, isn't it? Nothing comes for free. Especially not in lands like these. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't trust it. If The if woman's you... eyes dart back and forth between the three of you. I stick my tongue out at the woman. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of, like, recoils back a little bit, and then, like, leans forward and turns her head just slightly to, like, regard you more with one eye. And then she says, Priestess, you and I, we are not so different. Oh my god. I feel like we're very different. She pulls the wrapping from her head back. And you see cascading down from this this uh, bundle that was uh, up under the the scarf, a long like ponytail of like greenish blue hair that uh, goes down to past her waist and pools down at the uh, at the floor next to her. And she pulls the the scarf down from her mouth, and you see that she has sort of like golden scales that uh, drift down from her eyes down onto her neck and follow down further onto her body. I was going to be more creeped out if she had pink hair. Um, I uh, was waiting for that I too. I was waiting for that too. <laughs> uh, I'm well, going to stay firmly where I am. I cross my arms and just kind of like huddle it on myself. I don't trust this. I don't trust this. Uh, Lulz is going to speak up and say, so wait, so he's going to ask the lady to clarify. So you know the future and, and the universe and everything? Where all threads of the weave are, there too am I. Then in that case, you should know what we're going to do next. And there's a pause for a moment, <laughs> and then a smile creeps up her face. Make a spirit check for me at threshold six, please. Okay. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. I'm good with turning around now. We will find our clue some other way. 
What'd you get for me, Lawler? Uh, four, four, and a ten. Oh. She opens her mouth and takes a humongous deep breath and then dips one hand into the small pool in front of her, holds that little water up to her mouth and pours it in and lets it sort of like fall out of her lips down onto her neck and then speaks. What you seek is beheld by three eyes and lies in the only bright place in hallways of gloom. The wayward spirits that encircle this hag's house will warn you away. Do not listen. Well, I'm convinced. That was pretty good. <laughs> that sounds like clue number three. Thank you for your prophecy. I don't trust anything that's free. I don't trust anything that's free. Unless it's love. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, like, with the, the water just kind of, like, trickles down the front of her, like, wrappings and such. And she sits back on, like, on her haunches, puts either hand on, on like, either side of the ground next to her. And then just breathes real methodically and slow and heavy. Is 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 that is that water good? Ma'am. Be... Her eyes kind of snap down to you and she says You could drink. You other two should not. But you, priestess, you could drink. I think we should probably not drink unknown. Uh, let's set a good example for Lawler. <laughs> I thought humans like to drink water and they need it to function. <laughs> we do, but apparently this is special prophecy water. <laughs> Also, she put it in her mouth and then spit it out, so not sanitary. I would I think we can just come away with what we have gained. I would like I would like to kneel by the water. Oh no. And I would oh. like to scoop some water into my hands and examine it. I'm not uh, just make I'm a... not just blindly putting it into my mouth. <laughs> make a wits check for me at say threshold seven. Oh no, wits? Um <laughs> No, no, I'm gonna use divine guidance and use spirit instead. <laughs> oh, but your health. <laughs> the right. things we do. The things we do to threshold save curiosity. Seven? That is a three, a one, and a seven! Ah, lucky. Nice. Uh, you, you hold this water up to your face, and, like, you scrutinize it. And as it starts to, you know, it, like, drips through the cracks between your fingers, you can see in it a reflection of your own face and the blue and red lights of the, the scintillating colors around you. And it seems just by the way it feels in your hands, to be crazy magic. Crazy magic. The crazy magic, like, yeah. The crazy. Insanely powerful. But down to crazy magic. I'm going to glance back up at the undeniably crazy prophecy lady and take, take a measured glance of her reaction to me examining the water. Her face has got the smuggest smug look on it. <laughs> <laughs> no. The smug is strong with this one. Like, Sus. if you wiped the cooling. smug look off her face, she would have a smaller smug look. <laughs> <laughs> she would have a smaller smug look. What I would like to do, I am a healer, yes, and an alchemist. I... Yeah, yeah. I imagine that amongst my typical travel supplies I would have a little a little medical kit 
I would at least have an empty potion bottle. I would like to oh, take sure. a bottle of this water. All right. Put in your inventory. You've got a bottle of prophecy water. Smart idea. The woman does not stop you from doing this, but her, her smile kind of like fades a teensy bit. Mm -hmm. I see what I'm not she doing did there. exactly what she wanted me to do. I will pocket the water. <laughs> I will give her a little smile and a curtsy. And I will turn to leave. All right. You have three clues. What you seek is not in a place of honor, nor in a place of sanctity. The ground is wet, and your boots will fill with brackish fen before you see your goal. You know that this must be a place that has regular floods, perhaps. Something like a marshland or a swamp. What you seek is guarded, but not protected. Watched, but not valued. Those who possess it know its value, but value it not. The house is deep, surrounded by stagnation and rot. You know that the water that is there must be still for the stagnation and rot to happen. You think that it must be a, a deep, sort of uh, lowland fen. What you seek is beheld by three eyes and lies in the only bright place in the hallways of gloom. The wayward spirits that encircle this place will warn you away. Do not listen. This all adds together to okay. indicate... A, a single specific space that invades the idea in your mind of where you must go. There is a space directly in the center of the of the the forest, not marked on your map. One that is called the Ghosts Marsh. They say it's haunted there, and they say that there is the only place that one can go. To meet the three sisters of Briarwood. This must be the place where your stolen artifact is. Well, then, are we ready, ready to go there? I didn't realize uh -huh. Shrek had three sisters. <laughs> I'm just picturing that the, the wayward spirits warning you not to go happen to be signs that say, danger, ogre, do not enter. <laughs> <laughs> um, my sisters, my vigor is pretty high again. So I think I'm ready to go there. Mine is at six. Mine is at five out of eight. You have not... Ha you have not taken enough time be uh, between now and your last rest to be able to successfully take another one. Oh, You'll no. need to travel some and spend some time first. It's the equivalent think... of like trying to take a nap just after waking up. I'm great at that. <laughs> I, okay. It also makes me feel worse than when I fell asleep. <laughs> True. <laughs> we have I... a lot of trekking to do to get to back to the center of the forest anyway mm -hmm. and it's gotten somewhat late so we can start the journey back camp again reach it tomorrow mm -hmm. mm. all right so you start uh heading back how far back would you like to go can we reach the our robot friend Wow, that would uh, be one space back, right? Yeah, you'd definitely be able to reach back at the uh, the sort of strange hilltop above the canopy. Whether we could That's find our robot friend place. again is another question. Mm -hmm. But you have an account open. You basically have one night stay free. If we can find the... it. Yeah, the path leading back winds in directions you don't recognize, but nevertheless you are able to navigate back to the bottom of this hill that reaches up above the canopy. You climb yourself all the way to the top and find the sun setting just like it did the day before. But today, there are no structures to be seen. Aww. Sad. Sedge. 
This is an okay place to make camp, though. There are, like, uh, outcroppings of the the hill that you are on that you can, like, make a camp under in case it rains, that kind of thing. <laughs> this might be a good place to do it, because or else we're back into the wilderness again, and, like, even the the dome had, like, a giant tribe of beastmen. They were friendly. One. They were friendly, but... People can potentially pass by there, and some of them might not be friendly traders. I think I like this place. Besides, it gives us a clear view if anyone tries to approach our camp. Yeah. As opposed to a forest. Well, yeah, you can we sort have of to see camp in anyway. Many we may as well. All right. You are able to set up camp in a relatively comfortable place here. Uh, go ahead and spend one supply and restore 1d6 vigor. <laughs> um, I, I'm oh. guaranteed to go back up the max. I was only missing one. I rolled a nice. one. And six. Yeah. Nice. I only get one health Nicely back. Done. Rip. That's unfortunate. That's Rip. so sad. Time to play but the Spacito. But you're seven out of eight, so... Yeah. That's not bad. Seven out of eight's yeah, okay. I mean, better to be seven of nine, but anyway. <laughs> Six of one you are... of another? <laughs> you are able to spend the rest of the evening through a very quiet and very temperate night and wake again as the sun rises. You feel pretty rested. From where you are now, you would wager that it's about a half a day's travel to the center of the forest, into the haunted swamps. Dun 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 dun. Let us not delay. The people are are depending on us. And our grades. So. <laughs> and our grades are depending on us. But so no, we have who... an entire village depending on us. Yes. <laughs> Who is going to feel lucky today? I'll do it. Hey, All right, please, roll me two d eight, please. Be me. Or you can do it if you like, but <laughs> nope. Last time that didn't go so great. <laughs> Which of these dice to use? Orange and green. Orange and green. Orange and green. Orange and green. The two characters who possess these dice were meant to be together anyway. A 10 and a 1. Ooh, wow, okay. Um, you can't roll a 10 on a d8. Wait. You must have rolled the wrong dice. It must be the wrong dice, yeah. Okay, two D8, forget that please. one. Uh, I was like, hang on, that's too polar. I was gonna say... <laughs> All right, I think I might have then. been rolling d10s on the navigation checks too, but I've only done one, so. Oh, a two and a good. five. Okay. Yeah, that will work out fine then. Um, it is a half a day's travel through thick underbrush and overgrowth, and you go further and further into the center of the forest. The further you go, the wetter the ground becomes, the more stagnant the air smells. The flies buzz, the frogs croak, and the snakes slither and hiss in the marshy fen, as, perhaps prematurely, the sun dips below the horizon, blanketing your surroundings in solemn playing. gloom. Some botanist Body. once told me <laughs> the world is gonna roll me. With the knowledge you have gathered on the perpetrators of the artifact's theft, you are certain that you will find what you seek here, deep in the swampy marsh at the center of the forest. You press on, your boots beginning to fill with the brackish water with each heavy, sloshing step, until you see the weirdly shaped house, if a house such a place may be called, come into view ahead. Before we go further, I just remembered I would like to give Lawler my bow saw. 
Oh, very nice. Slightly bigger than a letter opener. That's true. I have acquired a book. Lauder, if, you, if you'd like to use that one, then uh, you can set that one as a... You can set that one as a medium weapon. Ooh. I will bless this bow saw and name it. What am I going to name this, actually? Something religious, I'm certain. Mm -hmm. I shall. <laughs> I gratefully accept this magical, this majestic looking weapon, and I shall name it. Uh... Chive. Chive? <laughs> Tithe? 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 With tithe? A tithe. Oh, tithe. Actually, Not it's a good tithe, idea. Like the tithe. Green onion. Uh, it's friendship, tithe. because we know how powerful friendship is. That could also work. <laughs> uh, it's actually not letting me change the name of the weapon for whatever reason, but let me... Huh. Hmm. That's weird. That's I can hard. do it. I'll oh, set it to... You. Friendship, is that what we're doing? Um, change it to Tithes of Friendship, the bosaw. This is a tithe of friendship. It is an offering I make to my friend. Indeed. Very nice. Oh, tithe nice. of friendship. <laughs> I'll take out my sword and lightly tap each of your shoulders and bestow upon you the tithe of friendship. Da, da, da. Uh, nice. The house is dark, save for a single flickering firelight in one window. It looks almost like a horrible insect standing tall out of the swampy waters on its leg-like stilts. Here and there, a bluish shimmer of ghost light appears. Turn back. And then wanes back into the darkness. Hmm. This sign can't be for me because I can't, I can't read. read. <laughs> <laughs> we ignore the voice and head onward. All right. The closer you get to this strange structure, the more stagnant the water becomes you can see sort of bubbles coming from somewhere deep below in some of the deeper pools and you can see silhouettes of faces perhaps of drowned men the ghost lights that appear here and there plead with you turn back well i don't see any drowned women so i must be safe we're fine. <laughs> I don't think any of us are men here, so... Fair. Alright. There is a winding, curved path that leads up to the door. But as you approach... Peg Powler, whose skin is slick like green slime. Jenny Greenteeth, whose long, misshapen mouth is filled with pale green shards of glass. Nellie Long Arms, whose limbs stretch on far too long, bend too many times. The three hags stand before you, each with their singular eye open wide and shining pale green underneath their mangled hood. Oh my gosh. Those are horrifying. That AI generator certainly is doing work. <laughs> hmm. So, we do come armed with an important piece of knowledge, which is, though they may be guarding, because three eyes are, are guarding this object, three eye blind. they do not value, nor are they protecting the root hold scepter so maybe we can just say hey is there any garbage you don't want because <laughs> apparently they don't value it very much 
Which makes one wonder why they took it to begin with. Unless... Back scratcher. Paperweight. <laughs> I'm not sure if Lawler would think would actually think about this in character, but I, out of character, have just thought about this. What is the possibility that the quest giver, to begin with, was actually the bad guy, and we are giving them the key to some unknown monstrosity? I mean, that could be the case, but if <laughs> that if we choose Cosmo to believe laughed. that, and it's not true then we have doomed a village to be eaten by plants. That's very true. And I guess that would be metagaming to use uh, genre savvy to break that. <laughs> but the DM just laughed, which is never a good sign. And also the context clues of the game has told us that they don't value it, but why was it taken from the village? We could ask. We could ask. Greetings, the three of them sisters. stand. How are you? Greetings. By the milk the hare suckles from the cow, says one of them. You have traveled far only to come see the sisters of the Briarwood. Come, let us sup together. What have you brought to set on our table? Well... I have the finest, cleanest water with which to brew tea. Oh, yes, let us eat and drink together, and you can spill your experiences upon the canvas of conversation. We will provide, and you will provide in return, a second one says. I have a book. <laughs> Sorry. It's the it's the screen. It's the oh. genuine nature that gets me. I have a look. <laughs> Speaking of canvases, we have something quite lovely we could contribute. Which is some lovely pictures of sunsets. When is oh. the last time you saw a clear sunset? And oh, a sunrise. Mm. Oh we do have all three of them. All three of them like look at each other and like there there is obviously some telepathic communication happening for a moment. And then they all look back and the third one says, Yes, yes, we will provide. And then you must also. Those are the rules of hospitality. Yes, they are. And you abide by them. We prefer guests who abide by them. And up right. above, the door to the house opens up, and you glance up to see it, but when you glance back down, the hags are not there anymore. And you glance back up at the door, and those three misshapen figures are standing on the threshold, beckoning you inside. Oh! oh. Goodness. Well, I think... I gave them some applause. Um, I think we can abide by hospitality, and... They are currently friendly, so also this is probably our most peaceful path forward. And I, peaceful paths are good. Also, uh, Lulz was not kidding. They literally have taken out a book that appears to be made up entirely <laughs> of ones and zeros. It is their divine holy book, and Lulz says without a hint of understanding what they're repeating that they learned from the internet. Hello there. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, the Omnissiah, today? Can you All play, right, play uh, Doom on that book? <laughs> no, I mean, I actually have that written in my inventory. <laughs> it's very good. I love it. Well, I will oh, personally take the invitation in. Same. All right. The path leading up to the door is kind of slimy and not exactly comfortable, but it is easy enough to walk. You find yourselves at the threshold of the strange, twisted house. The one window inside lit up, and all the rest of them dark and gloomy. Just beyond the threshold is a table set for six. But it is dark and gloomy in that room. When you look back, 
the hags are not by the threshold, and you look back at the table, and each of them has sat at a, at a, one of the seats, leaving a seat in between each of them. Um. And the first one that spoke sort of gestures and says, In, in with you, and close the door behind. I will close the door behind, but not before welcoming eight beautiful raiders. Hello, hey, that was slick. That. Welcome, Hello, raiders. Geeky. That was very Wonderful. slick. Impressive. Uh, eight bluish ghost lights appear around <laughs> the door frame with you and glide inside the room, briefly illuminating it in pale sickly blue. I love them. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, Raiders. Do the three of you, what, what are the three of you up to then? Well, I'll take a seat, of course. I don't want to be rude. They yes. are being very hospitable. Same. Exactly. The, as you close the door behind, it is kind of gloomy, but thanks to these eight ghost lights that are now here, you can see relatively clearly in the kind of pale bluish. The seats are old and musty and smell a little bit like mold when you sit on them, but the table is laid out with six teacups, six saucers, six plates, six forks, six knives, six spoons. And the first of the hags reaches out one hand and sets it down palm first on the table, and when she raises her hand back up, there is a kettle of boiling water, oh, and she opens the top. To use the danger water. <laughs> she opens the top and says, "You spoke of clear water. Add it to the kettle." And so I do. Are you using the prophecy water? I will use the prophecy water. You pop the cap off and dribble the water inside. The second that your water touches the water on the inside of the kettle, an enormous plume of steam <laughs> envelops your entire hand up your arm, onto your shoulder, and over your head for half a second. Make a spirit check at threshold nine, please. Akaha. Whoa. Okay, what have I done? Yeah, this water was dangerous for two of the three of us to consume, so I'm not sure it's very <laughs> hospitable to offer it. <laughs> Listen, do I always think no? Do I think often? <laughs> also no. Lulz shouts <laughs> Agiha at the table. <laughs> uh, what was I? No. Spirit? Spirit threshold nine. Oh no. That's a one, a two, and a seven. Oh. <laughs> the steam <laughs> washes over your eyes, and for just a moment, you see somewhere else. And you see the lit room on the inside of this house, where on top of a table, covered in a thick layer of dust, sits a greenish wood sort of uh, scepter with a gnarled ball of roots on the top, vaguely humanoid face shaped, a uh, red gem down at the bottom, covered in at least half an inch of dust. Hmm. And your vision snaps back to the table. The second hag puts her hand above the kettle and opens it, and a bunch of dark green leaves fall into the water. And the third hag moves her hand, and the kettle snaps shut. Now, those who seek the Briarwood sisters always seek us for reason. Pray, why do the Briarwood sisters be besought? We have been on a journey here in these woods and have encountered prophecies and guides and warnings that have directed us to you. We are seeking the Root hold scepter 
Do you have it here? Make a wits check threshold seven for me. I'm just going to be up front with them because I heard that they don't value it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we can show them pretty pictures of sunsets in exchange. And as being kind of floating eyes, I feel like they'd like them. <laughs> and I have I'm a book. I'm giving them good water. I'm giving them wonderful water. I mean, it's very I'm certain giving guys. them something. Just Magical kids. water, they might be into that. Um, I got a nine and two eights. Oh boy. Um, you speak the name of the thing, and as you speak it, you feel the word be pulled physically out of your mouth, and the sound that comes out of your mouth becomes an image of the root hold scepter that you are looking for. And it sort of wafts in the steam coming from the, the kettle. And the three of them kind of like look at each other and you can tell, again, there's telepathic communication happening. And then the third one sort of uh, leans forward and says, We have it. What business is it of yours? On our way here, we passed through a village who claimed that it had been stolen from them and that without it, the forest would absorb their village and transform its citizens into trees. We were hoping to help them. <laughs> Lulz, uh, kind All of... three of them begin to laugh in, in unison with each other, uh, a horrible chorus of screeching laughter. Uh, Lulz takes to the side and whispers to the other two party, or to their other two party members, I have a feeling that that's not a good laugh. Maybe not, but Honesty. The second one puts both of her hands flat on the table, and then the table shimmers under her hands, and three piles of gold coins rise up under her hands. Ooh, shiny. And she says, she says, uh, You have been tricked. Such a trinket has lived in this house for decades. Stolen indeed. If you want it, you can take it. But what say instead you take these? And she kind of pushes these three piles of gold forward onto the table. If you take these and leave something for us, we will consider that village's mischief to have been complete. Um, I was going to answer that, but I have just been told from Jarl Harvey that, Cosmo, you have a wonderful hat. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well thank you Jarl it Harvey is a I, hat. Indeed, I did it is a lot a of work hat. to get this hat it is a very good <laughs> hat um, as for the hags um, I am not going to take their, their capitalistic temptations <laughs> and instead ask <laughs> them uh, what mischief did the village commit You met with a village, with people, at the edge of the Briarwood. Surely no sane and smart human would build in such a place. You were fooled. Lulz just blinks their eyes and is like, what? And then I... the first one kind of like cocks its head to one side and its eye like moves back and forth a few times and says, 
No. You take the scepter and you fling it as far from the forest as you can. We can take it further without flinging it. Take it away. And that little mischief will be forever ended. Lulz raises their hand like a school person, like a schoolboy or school or schoolgirl, school person. There is there is an awkward there is an awkward pause for a minute, and the three of them kind of like glance back and forth at each other, and then the second one just kind of goes, "Yes, you there," and kind of points to you. <laughs> What does the root of the staff person staff thing actually do? Why? Nothing important. Important is relative, isn't it? Not important to us. Then may we know what it does? In general. You provide your hospitalities and you can have it. And the third one pours some of the tea out into each of the six cups. It is a dark greenish thick concoction. Um, as a way to a to sidestep drinking the tea I've been served, I will turn to Agaha and go, uh, could you please pull out that device of yours and show them the screenshots we took? I have oh, a book. Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I have a book. I will The third hag unfurls a finger with far too many joints in it far too long. Oh, that's just and scary. Taps the cover of your book a few times. And then begins to curl the finger around the book and slide it slowly towards herself. She desires to read the good word or the good bits, the good digits, the numbers, the holy digits, the good, digits. The good binary. Well, and in uh, the meantime, while she does that, I will take uh, out my telephone, open up the image gallery that has uh, a lot of pictures of flowers, especially forget-me-nots, a couple Aww. of really poorly taken selfies, um, <laughs> several videos, actually, of ferrets playing, and most recently, uh, the screenshots we've taken of the sunset and the sunrise. And it looks like I took one accidentally as someone was falling over into the water. And then there's a copy of the sunset again. And I slide the phone over to the sisters. Hey, Ageha, what are the chances that there is a photograph in the gallery that you are scrolling past that you don't want anyone to see? <laughs> what are the chances? I don't think there are any. I don't. Okay, you're a you're a, a wholesome individual. You don't take I don't take any pictures risque you wouldn't pictures. want others to see. No, it's it's mostly ferrets and flowers. The, the second folder, it might be a different story, but this is the <laughs> camera gallery. <laughs> the second hag sort of like cranes her neck crazy long over the table and like leans down her one big eye getting extremely close to the the screen and as she leans back up the image is like pulled from the center of it like a spider web up into her eye oh my god and you've lost one of the one of the <gasps> the pictures no, no, of no. the sunset oh thank god and uh, as she sits back up at you, there is now a vertical rectangular photograph of a sunset in her eye. I was very worried you were going to take a different picture. Dun, dun, you dun, dun. spoke of uh, painting the 
tapestry of conversation with our experiences, and so I thought such a beautiful view would be a tapestry worth looking at for all of you. The second hag uh, sort of like cracks her neck a little bit and then draws her hand across the table and where her fingers touch a sort of like wet streak stays behind and inside of that is uh, a very crudely drawn like stick figure slideshow of all of the things that you have done on your way here <laughs> and she kind of nods at it and says the canvas is rich go to the one room with the lit lamp and you may have your stupid little rod thank you very much and the three of them all start sipping on their tea and like pointing at the little uh, slideshow and when the one with the photograph in her eye blinks it like the the eyelids close over it and when it opens back up it has to like recenter itself like it's a contact lens <laughs> i love that uh but behind them one of the sort of like weirdly shaped walls a a panel slides open to reveal a staircase going up and it seems to be lit by firelight can i, I just go and this tea and see if it's safe you are uh, going to take a sip or a sniff? A sniff. I want to take a sniff. Yeah. It smells like really, really overbrewed oolong tea. Oh, my. Hmm. But does it smell dangerous? You're an alchemist. Make a wits check at, say, threshold eight. Oof. Wits, huh? <laughs> wits? Nah, I'm going to do that at Spirit. <laughs> I'm going to use divine guidance. <laughs> Very nice. That is a six, a seven, and an eight. Hey, that'll work out. You're not sure if the word dangerous applies. What you would apply to it is unstable magic. <laughs> It well, might yes, not be dangerous. That's, prob that's probably due to my intervention. And it doesn't seem to be having any adverse effects on them. Yeah, but you're not sure what the physiognomy of a one-eyed hag is. That's true, that's true. You know what, I'm just going to ask. This tea smells delightful, I say, no longer burdened with my truth-telling armor. Um... <laughs> Is it safe for human consumption? Uh, the third hag uh, with the crazy long fingers who is currently like flipping through the book of zeros and ones uh, sort of like shrugs and is like <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a human guest before? The first one who is uh, like poking at the second one's eyeball trying to like make the picture scroll goes <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna risk it all and take a tiny little sip of tea. All right. Uh, direct like this, there's no, there's no role for it. Um, you take a sip and it washes over your, like over your palate, and instantly you feel it climb up your brain and into your eyes, and you see the chalk circle on the ground in the center of Professor Bergamot's classroom flash up and the three of you stand there, one of you holding the scepter in your hand. And then, boom, it's gone. While Agriha is seeing this, I am uh, motioning for Lawler to get up with me so that it's like, oh, they just said that we could go over there we should probably go do that so that we are <laughs> not also expected to sip the tea 
<laughs> just gonna start heading over to make those dreams come true. It's a good thing you did so so quickly too, because Lawler's next action would have been to also sip the tea. <laughs> Which is not good. No sippy. Just Bad knock sip. the tea back. Agriha oh, is the only one who can safely sip this water, so let us tea. excuse it's ourselves now. when the social niceties niceties uh, allow it. Ah. Uh. As you the know, three of you climb this staircase. Go, wait, wait, go wait, ahead. wait, wait. <laughs> She's still drinking. Do you mind? Do you mind if I take some of this home? I have someone I think would really, really appreciate this. Oh, this, no. This oh, my the second one uh, reaches in, like, up under her big eyelid and, like, scratches the top of her eye. And when her <laughs> hand comes back down, the, the image is straight again. And she goes, eh. So you wouldn't you wouldn't mind then? The all three of them together wave like a hand sort of dismissively at you. Like, yeah. These are they're just tired of me asking questions. I'm gonna take a bottle of prophecy tea. <laughs> this home. is the chillest right, group you've... of hags ever. They're so chill, I love them. <laughs> they're good hags. They just want some funny stories. They just want to watch a five hour VOD of some people playing tabletop games. And to read the entirety of the B movie script in binary. In binary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Eventually, they're going to start the... reciting it. You like jazz? Uh, the three you of like you jazz. climb the stairs, and it seems to stretch on for further than than should be possible for the size of this house. But finally, you are deposited in. What appears to be like a dusty old bedroom where everything is covered in a thick layer of dust. Including on the table next to like an overturned bottle of ink long dried and like uh, a mummified half sandwich is the root hold scepter. Gosh. What well, kind of check would it be to investigate the scepter before taking it and see if it really does hold any magical properties? That'd be a spirit check, probably. Go ahead and uh, make a spirit check, let's say, threshold without touching it. Threshold mm. eight. Can I do that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Mm, okay. All right. Anyone who would like can make a uh, spirit check threshold eight. Three, four, ten. Nine, four, nice. five. Nice. I'll Very just good. leave it to these guys. I do not have that much knowledge. <laughs> I just kind of trust it at this point. Very good. Uh, <laughs> the three, er, the two of you sort of look at this thing and you can tell that there is some magic to it. Uh, something maybe transmutative <laughs> in nature. You think that this is Maybe a magic wand? Hmm. One that has a, a specific <laughs> spell stored inside of it that can be cast a certain number of times. Oh, joy. We can't find our robot friend again, can we? He can give us more information on a quote-unquote product if he actually has it. That's we true. We could further investigate this, but we weren't able to find his building. <clears throat> because I no longer know if I trust this artifact in the hands of the villagers, if they were lying to us. Now, this is the culmination of your whole investigation. You have a choice. Will you follow the advice of the hags and take the, the wand as far away from that village as possible? Will you bring it back to the village elder and hand it over? Or will you do something else? So, Ageha is the only one who saw the vision when she drank the tea, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, can't say that. Mm. Hmm. 
Yeah, and despite what I said about the metagaming stuff, Lulz really would not think to think that they are being double crossed. So they Perhaps can't say anything either. Not... We... we had we were given at the very, very start of this adventure the warning not to fall prey to the wiles of the spirits of the forest. What mm -hmm. are the chances that the villagers we met weren't people, but were spirits? That's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> I mean, you brought up a good point earlier where it seemed strange that um, we've been told twice now that the staff is not important, but it was not important to the, prof the uh, prophetess and also to these hags. But it seems important to the villagers for some reason. And the hags pointed out, why would humans want to live so close to such a dangerous forest anyway? I mean, the counterpoint to that is, it was only after this staff was stolen according to their story, which does not match the hags, but uh, according to the villagers, the, the forest began encroaching on their village once the staff left, which implies that it didn't used to be so close to the forest. Mm. But the staff has been here for... And we don't even need to take the hag's word for that. It's covered in dust. It's possibly been just sitting here for a decade. Right next to someone's sandwich, which implies that whoever mm. used to live here left in a hurry. Or mm. the hags are just very messy. Messy. <laughs> Six of one, half dozen of another. I wonder why, and Lol says this, and actually says this, and we'll go, we'll go ahead and say this in character. Um, I wonder why the hags didn't want to tell us what it actually does. They also did not necessarily answer my question on what mischief the. Well, I guess. The mischief is that they pretended to be a village in the first place. Hmm. Um. So I chose not to do a spirit check on the the rod, but now we know it's it's a it's a wand and it has a charges of a specific spell. We don't know what spell that is. Can I, because I have gone to the esteemed Professor Bergamont's magic classes, attempt to. <laughs> To puzzle out what spell it may be? The only way to figure that out would be either with a spell that identifies it, or by activating the wand. Mm. And if it only has one charge, that's not a good idea. Okay, the, the genre savvy Do... in me now just assumes that the spell is spell of go home back to class. You're there, or dimension Night or, yeah. Gardenia. You are a lady, yes? Do you? I am a female. Um, if you mean <laughs> if I have the title lady in a noble sense, the answer would be no. Though I am hmm. familiar with the, the affairs of the royal household. I just think you're dressed so well, it wouldn't do for a proper lady to not have a set of pearls. Um, I have a, a gemstone brooch and a, a good deal of lace, but I'm not currently wearing any pearls. It's not quite as uh, convenient for, for being a knight. That, that's tragic. I didn't bring my party pearls. <laughs> Lulz has no idea where this conversation is going, and it's just kind of zoning out. <laughs> but, it's con but it's strongly considering playing with the staff. I just realized, yeah. Identify. Identify a takes pearl. a pearl. It takes a pearl, or in older editions, a goldfish. What? Yeah, but you don't have either of those hilarious. with you. We do not yeah, have... that's why I was wondering if you would wear pearls. I unfortunately do not have pearls on my design. <sighs> Just a lot of lace. And then artists I commission get very sad because they have to draw lace. 
Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's make your decision now. Will you take it back to the village? Will you take it somewhere far away? Or is there a third option that you haven't told me? I think we can at least make half this decision. We can take the rod and leave the forest. Because if, for instance, option three was activate the rod, the, these hags are not very into this rod, so I feel like it would be very inhospitable to activate it inside their house. <laughs> so, the village well, is outside the forest, and they would like it outside the forest. So maybe we can take it that far and, and see how we're feeling then. We should see what happens when it leaves the confines of the forest, but not necessarily deliver it directly to the village leader immediately. Yeah. How do we even get back to the classroom? That is the question. Hopefully the, the professor who is watching and evaluating our performance has some way of doing so. You mean we don't just log out? I don't believe so. I don't see any log out button. I should... Mm. Lala looks disappointed in dot hack sign. <laughs> so, what if I told you it was prophesized we take it back to the professor? Well, then we probably aren't supposed to give it to uh, somebody else, because then we can't bring it back. Yeah. Well... I don't know if it was the right decision. I didn't get to see his reaction or anything. And I don't know what happens if you intentionally divert a prophecy. Perhaps we were intended to go against fate to prove that we can. Should we take it to the village for that reason? Hi me, why me stuff? <laughs> If we had that watch, we could test multiple options. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmo oh, shame. was smiling Make through his teeth. States unlock all endings. One hundred percent. I genuinely God. don't know what decision to make. I don't know either. <laughs> Let's. I don't take know what the right the choice is. And. When we leave the forest, maybe the professor will be like, Congrats! You did it! And just yoink us back to his classroom. Mission success. And if he doesn't do that, then that means we have to do something else. But will he send us back? No, oh, you mean if, if he doesn't pull us. Okay, yes. No, understood. <sighs> Let's take it out of the forest, then. We'll say goodbye to While... our hosts. Uh, the three of them are, like, I completely, also like... Ask them. <laughs> like, hey, what does this fun <laughs> stick we're taking out of your house do? Well, we already asked One of them that. is, like, on all fours on the table with their, like, their eye really close to the, the little slideshow. The other has gotten the book and has, like, turned it into a sort of, like, accordion fold greeting card type thing and is playing it like an accordion. <laughs> uh, the other one, the other one with the, the photograph in its eye is, like, trying to scrape the photograph off of it so that he could put it, like, on the wall. Do you... Do you uh, want me to... We can... Uh print out one of those pictures for you. We could bring that back. I, I can't maybe. help but feel all like this. All three of them together all three of them together just go eh. I can't help but feel that this is not normal human behavior but these are not normal humans are they? No, they're no. single eyeball hags. Okay, they seem pretty preoccupied. <laughs> So we leave the forest. Does anything try to attack and kill us? The road back out of the forest is surprisingly straight and calm. It's not even really that wet. It's almost like you're walking on like a normal forest path. We love narrative convenience. <laughs> or maybe it's a you hint. You find yourself... <laughs> 
you find yourself walking out of the forest pretty nearby to that uh, root gnarl village that you came from. All right, so just kind of taking this and running aimlessly with it feels odd to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like we find a nice open space and we maybe try activating the staff and see what mischief it causes. And maybe that's our ticket home or maybe it does something horrible and we know we definitely don't want to give that to the village or maybe it is staff of no more trees point of order it's a scepter it's more like a wand than a staff <laughs> point of order two this is we are being graded on it do you think the professor would approve of us just using a magical artifact without knowing what it is is that what he would want his students to do? If we do it in safe and controlled conditions, then we don't have access to the identify spell? I mean, we haven't been offered a way to show it to him, so... Well, he's monitoring us, right? We can just hold up the wand and go, we found it. Okay, we let's try it. that. Let's try <laughs> that. We're going to try that. We're going to hold the scepter in the air and go, Yo, Professor! <laughs> How about we, we take a screenshot of the scepter and then we upload it to the weave? Let's do it. Yeah, let's get it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We oh. can take a selfie of all of us holding the scepter going, We did it! And then, I, and then I'll text it to the, to the professor. Yeah, try that. <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> Uh, Sister Ageha, make a spirit check at threshold nine for me, please. Oh my goodness, okay. Oh, the please, reception please, please, here please. is just terrible. You know what? With a threshold nine, I want to roll this in the open. All right. I'm rolling 3d10. <laughs> me and Lawler take, like, <gasps> a large step back. <laughs> oh my god. What was rolled? A 10! A 10, also... a 2, and an 8. Hey, look, a nat 20. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so... Nat 20 on 3d10. You thought it couldn't be done, but we've done it. <laughs> and more. You you sort of, like, walk around and hold the phone up in, like, random <laughs> directions for a minute until you get one tiny little bar, and you push the send button exactly <laughs> at that time. <laughs> A moment later, a message comes back, and it says, You found the stick. What will you do with it? Oh, Gosh okay. darn it! Darn it! Of course he would be cryptic. Whatever we do with it, I don't think we're supposed to just wildly cast it. I just can't know what the right thing to do with it is without knowing what it does, so that's my problem. <laughs> I want I have you're going to hate me for this professor oh boy I have been told that different magic has different tastes no lick it you... we have a, a a tea of no things yeah but what I want to bring that back for the professor that's for him. That's like, that's just a little gift for him. <laughs> that's literally just a gift for the professor. I'm not drinking the professor's gift. So here's what you already know about no. the scepter. You know that it is a wand that has a certain number of charges of a spell in it. And you know that by its nature is transmutative. Right, it is transmutative. Wait. Okay, it's so not taking us anywhere. So I just realized something. It only has certain number of charges. Mm -hmm. So it being in the village to hold to hold back the briarwood doesn't make any sense because it would eventually run out of charges and fail anyway. I mean, one would assume that it 
refreshes those charges? Not always. Some items do that. But... Actually, uh, Night Gardenia, you know that this is a third edition item. What? <laughs> Amazing how I know that! Because <laughs> it feels like you're a third edition character. Third edition, I not 3.5 edition? Fifth edition. Well, oh, uh, you know that this has a limited number of charges in it, and that it does not recharge. Oh, well, in that case, the village is, in fact, causing mischief. So I guess our answer is, since transmutation is not teleportation, because that's conjuration, uh, I guess we, we have places in our map that are past the village. Maybe we go there to put the staff. That or we just run aimlessly into the distance until we find somewhere neat to throw it. What if we threw it into that giant crystal lake that we passed by not too long ago? That's so far away. That's, <laughs> That's so far away. <laughs> it's the distance is the issue. <laughs> I just want to bring it back to the professor at this point. I don't think we should take it to the village. I think the village is the wayward spirits we were warned about. What's the name of this scepter As you again? say this, the root hold scepter. But as you say that sentence, you hear footsteps approaching in the grass. Oh no. And you look over oh, no. to see the village elder. Run! Run. Run. <laughs> Run. Give it to me now. We need it for the village. I hate to run away from people Tell asking us. for health, but we've got so much evidence. Hold, hold it away from him. I pointed him. What are you actually going to use it for? To beat back the forest. How? It has a limited number of charges. There is a pause, <laughs> and then... It's magic. You don't understand. I think we they just failed a bluff check. We have very good magic teacher, actually. We understand things about magic. We are literally students of magic. There's another pause, and then you see him stand up straighter and uh -oh. become about a foot taller. And his, his like, green woven vines hair and all that sort of shimmers into a bright green shock of, of hair that comes up off of his head and waves in the, in the, the wind-like grass. And his skin turns this sort of, like, paper birch white with black spots. And he stands eight feet tall, and he uh -oh. says... Book so it. much for diplomacy. Book it. Run! Run! <laughs> We're I mean, that could be a boss fight. Or the we second could run you turn, and throw the stick. The second you turn, you take a step to run away. You've made the decision not to give it to the the village. And as yeah. your foot as your feet all touch the ground, it lights up in a circle of blue and red chalk. And with a flash of light, praise the Omnisaya. Dumbling back into the classroom. Oh, thank goodness that worked because I was about to snap the wand in half. Ooh, <laughs> bad things happen when you snap what? I I played for a campaign where we snapped the wand in half, and it it set off a series of events. It sure did. My dear students. You have shown remarkable resilience in not getting killed by a fire robot. That was pretty impressive. That's, that's Cosmo it, huh? sits there at a, at a desk, uh, shuffling through a bunch of pages, marking a bunch of them. Uh, several other students are sitting in the classroom as well, and uh, all of them are sort of like starting to hold up uh, score, like, numbers on, on cards. And, uh, the professor looks over, like, notes all of them down, and, uh, 
sort of stacks his papers and sets them down and says, So what did we learn? We learned to be very careful about talking to strangers and with handling magical objects. So that's very what I good. the first person that speaks to you. And diplomacy works more often than not. Beep, beep, I'm a sheep, comes from someone's phone. <laughs> oh, yes, that's my note. Oh, uh, we learned that, um, well, the best way to combat most any situation is to rely on one another. I like that lesson. The professor nods sagely and says, You've made use of several of the skills that we have practiced in class. You made use of a lot of the knowledge that we've covered, in addition to some of the extracurriculars that we've done as well. Not only that, but you figured out what was happening, and you made a choice when given a choice. That alone, whether it is correct or not, is more than many adventurers can say for themselves. Today's exam is graded eight points. A pretty darn high grade, if you ask me. And he, uh... I pull my little, sort of like uh, lean prophecy tea bottle out of my bag, assuming that it came with us. Not only did that come with you, but so did the root hold Sepster, still in your hand. And he sort of, like, leans back and gives, like, a little golf clap, and the rest of the students around start to clap as well. Oh, yay! The first practical exam of the term passed with flying colors. Welcome back, students. You did a great job. Aww. Thank you, Professor. Would you like some oolong and that... tea? <laughs> and he goes, did I say eight points? I meant nine. And that <laughs> is where the session ends. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations, Knight Aster Gardenia, yeah. Priestess Ageha Verkor, and Artificial Intelligence Lawler Hicks. Beep, beep, you not only survived, but also... It, it, it came out like incredibly on top. Nobody died, which is uh, surprising considering this system. And you made use of a lot of the skills that you had learned uh, in and adjacent to the professor's classes. That will be the Yay. end of our session for the night. We Yay. did so good. We did so good. The power of friendship hey, yeah. and also critical thinking saved the day. I didn't even have to shoot <laughs> anything with lasers once. I no, mean, but you, you did certainly do a lasers. lot of healing. <laughs> we did heal. Yeah, each of you made use of the skills that you had uh, on your character sheets as well, which is very good. Speaking of those character sheets, Lawler and Ageha. Did you interact with devices or magic that you did not comprehend? As in... I would say drinking prophecy water tea. Um, I would say yes, personally that speaking. Tracks. I mean, I did try to read Infernal earlier in the session, right? Yeah. That's true. That was a thing you could not comprehend. Very nice. And Night Gardenia, did you nearly die while defending someone else? Um, you quite nearly drowned trying I to save me. I did nearly drown, and I was up there because I wanted to give, uh, or be in arm's reach so that I could take damage from people. So, you also, both of you, kind of saved my life earlier with the robot. I was about to be domed. Also very true. Mm -hmm. Did you, all of you, spill the blood of something great and terrible? There was sure a lot of blood in that blood chamber. 
And there is also <laughs> something great and terrible in that case. We actually did the opposite of spill blood. We cleaned blood. You definitely cleaned it up. <laughs> Let's count this as a level up. Woo. If these characters come back, then you'll be a you'll be a step up on that one. Go ahead and choose a new ability and mm. put the check mark next to it. And in addition, uh, roll a d4 and add that to your maximum vigor. Awesome. Oh boy. I get to add I got a whole oh. one. I get to add 4. Wow. I'm, Not so bad. I'm glad the people with less health got more health. I will take only gaining one, because I already had 12. Hey, Thanks. that worked uh, out exceptionally well. Which of these should I get next? Hmm, should I learn to cast Flamethrower on people? I'm <laughs> definitely getting the one healing ability. I needed yeah, to real. be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, Post-grading, you I got UT. were... Yeah. Po post grading you actually were granted another point by one of the audience so uh, you actually came out with a legitimate nine points on that one which is exceptionally good Woo. a legitimate nine so and let's... a bribed ten <laughs> for real yeah, uh, let's go ahead and wrap posted <laughs> everyone go into his channel and tell them to give me a good grade <laughs> Let's go ahead and wrap up for the night, then. Thank you very much, you three, for coming in and participating in the uh, first practical exam uh, of the term. I very much appreciate it, and I hope that you had a good time. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely wonderful, Professor. Thank you. Yeah, this was really fun. Thanks for the invite. Wonderful. Incredibly fun. So, uh, let's wrap up the last bit of it. My name is Cosmo Bergamot. I am the wizard in the top right corner of the screen for some people. Uh, and the next thing that I will be doing will probably end up being one of the, uh, ink and pen sketch streams for the bestiary that we are collectively putting together, where you come to the stream and tell me what monster to put in my book. Lawler, what have you got going on? Uh, this was actually my uh, last event for the weekend. We're going to be continuing, but tomorrow we're going to be starting up Spooky Jump Scare Mansion, uh, the horror game that my followers have chosen to torture me with. So we're going to be playing that every Monday <laughs> evening uh, from 9, 9 Central Standard Time to midnight until that's completed. Um, aside from well that, done. I... On Wednesdays, we'll be continuing our adventures in Atward, and we'll be continuing Deus Ex on Friday. And I don't have anything planned for next weekend just yet. Wonderful. Uh, Miss Ageha, what about you? I do not have any upcoming plans, honestly. After uh, the past few days, I've decided I need a little bit of a break. Take time to myself. So... Sporadic variety streams as usual, uh, but uh, nothing, nothing insane planned. Wonderful, wonderful. And what about you, Night Gardenia? You've got something coming up, don't you? I do. Um, tomorrow, in tomorrow and forty minutes from now, which <laughs> is uh, uh, six p.m. Central U.S. time. Um, I will be continuing my playthrough of Going Under, which is a, a lovely little roguelike about being an unpaid intern. And then on Friday, I should be playing more Sonic Adventure 2 with my friend Wildflowers, who has never played a Sonic game ever. And then <laughs> oh, I do not have a date yet, but I have been preparing for my debut where i will stop being this lovely png drawn by me and instead will be a moving live 2d model also drawn by me so it will look very similar hey. but it will move and my hair will bounce and it will be so much fun and i will also have a lore video and talk more about myself so uh I'm very nearly done with the preparations for that and we'll start announcing an actual date. And so uh, hit me up on Twitter and keep an eye out for that if you'd like. Absolutely wonderful. 
Well, uh, that's the end of our session today. Thank you so much for everyone who has come by to participate as well. Let's go ahead and uh, each of us see if there's someone we can send our dear uh, audiences to. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. I have a personal little wizard friend I would love to do that for. Is, is that definitely, so? Definitely not a snake. Definitely a perfectly normal human man. Mm -hmm. Imagine what being is, normal uh, human. For real, right? What is their name? Uh, Sean the Human. All one word. Human is spelt with two U's. And how is Sean spelled? S-H-A-W-N. Sean the Human, who is playing Sean Halo Master Chief Collection. Wonderful. That'll be a little palate cleanser after all of this. No kidding. He is a, um... Well, he, he is similar to the group we have here. He is a good, good, always in character wizard boy. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Well, if you are in my classroom, do not forget to copy and paste the raid message. And as always, um, do your homework. Can you spell that one more time? Because I looked up Sean the human and I'm getting a blank at the moment. Sorry. Uh, the human is spelled with two U's. Oh, with two U's. Okay. The human. The human. The human. The human. human. The human. Wonderful. Which is definitely All not right. indicative of the humanness of Sean being to question. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely Here we not. Go. He's a perfectly normal human man. I see the human. Looks like they're alive. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Are we reading at the same time? Oh, you all already rated? Mm -hmm. uh, We've already rated. I have <laughs> just gone. <laughs> okay, I'll go now. I'll head over as well. Okay, very good. It's time for Cosmo Raid. Boom, boom. Oh, my Wonderful. lag is real. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, it's a little oh, so big sweet. on my side as well. Wonderful. This, uh, this has worked out exceptionally well, my dear friends. Glad you think so. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, taking the last six and a half hours. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's, it's my one usual stream time. Are Pardon. a myth. They're not real. <laughs> well, this this did end up being a one shot, but like it is impossible yeah. to do a, a, a like a two hour one shot in anything yeah. that is less than like here is a child's puzzle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go do the thing. The thing. But yeah, I, I hope that all of you had a good time, enough to perhaps do another one in the future. Oh, I would love to. Absolutely. This system or any other. <laughs> this was, this was okay. great fun. Y'all are just also I great people got... to play with, I think. Yeah, the, the three of you seem to be uh, super chill people. I would like to uh, maybe do it with a slightly bigger party for whatever we're doing next. Maybe one other person. Mm -hmm. Um. We'll figure out who is available for what and, and when and all of that. But thank you so much for, for coming by. I really appreciate it. Heck yeah. Let's do this again sometime soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. within reason for the preparation that you have to do for it. Oh, and, uh, yeah, you have, you have the right idea 